we have been discussing some mcqs based on ugc net english syllabus in this process today in this video we will try to discuss more questions related to english literature and research and teaching aptitude without any delay let's begin the discussion of first question it says which of the following is the proper sequence for writing a dissertation so when you will go for mphil though nowadays it has been abolished but for phd it has been there so if you want to write a phd dissertation uh, then or not only phd uh, in some not some uh, according to new education policy uh, the degree it has been now uh, it has been increased to four years earlier it was three years so at the uh, last year that year will be a year of dissertation so there too you have to write but since you are not studying graduation so no point of talking about that but this i have told you some basic information so let's try to find out the uh, proper sequence for writing a dissertation number a is saying write a preliminary draft number b is saying develop a thesis statement number c is saying state your purpose in writing a paper number d is saying make an outline to help you keep to your plan as you write which one will be correct options are a b c d c b d a d a b c b d a c which one will be correct questions are uh, qu questions like this are often asked that's why you must be prepared to answer and face so correct answer will be b that means first c will come you you have to first state your purpose in writing a paper then b develop a thesis statement then d then you have to make an outline to help you keep to your plan as you write and then a you have to write a preliminary draft so this is the fundamental way okay to write a dissertation uh, then we have next question it says which of the following belongs to the category of good research ethics which of the following belongs to the category of good research ethics number a saying publishing the same paper in two research journals without telling the editors so this is not a good thing to do second is saying conducting a review of the literature that acknowledges the contributions of other people in the relevant field so whether it is correct or not you will know then including a colleague as an author on a research paper in return for a favor even though the colleague did not make a serious contribution to the paper number d saying copying text from published sources without giving credit to those who produce the sources correct answer will be number b that means conducting a review of literature that acknowledges the contributions of other people in the relevant field so this is a good research ethic practice got it the number three we have proquest proquest it is a what book text database search engine online journal so correct answer is proquest is a b that is text database got it it's a text database next question we have is which of the following best describes the phrase data abuse protocols in literary research number one plagiarism number two translating without permission number d non-payment of copyright dues number four quoting without acknowledgement options are one and two are correct one two and three are correct one two and three are incorrect one four are correct 
and the rest are incorrect so here we ha we have seen that one will be correct for sure okay so let's find out find out the answer of number four correct answer will be b that means one two and three are correct plagiarism translating without permission non-payment of copyright dues this will be called as data abuse protocols in literary research you must know about it and you must practice it practice it in your own research journey <clears throat> next question we have is number five it says the census carried out by the government of india is an example of what you all know uh, after every decade government of india uh, carries out census so now we have to find out what is that census will be called exploratory research casual research descriptive research hermeneutic research so number c is the correct answer descriptive research it is the correct answer descriptive research is the correct answer next question we have is identify the incorrect statement we have to find out the incorrect statement it says a hypothesis is made on the basis of limited evidence as a starting point for future investigations number b a hypothesis is a basis for reasoning without any assumption of its truth a hypothesis is a proposed explanation for a phenomenon number d scientific hypothesis is a scientific theory so what is the correct answer of six correct answer of six is d that is scientific hypothesis is a scientific theory okay scientific hypothesis is a scientific theory this is the incorrect statement all others are correct like a hypothesis is made on the basis of limited evidence as a starting point for future investigations a hypothesis is a basis for re reasoning without any assumption of its truth and a hypothesis is a proposed explanation for a phenomenon these are all are correct but this thing is not correct that is the scientific hypothesis is a scientific theory it's wrong number seven a work can become modern only if it is first postponed. A work can become modern only if it is first postmodern. This line is taken from answering the question what is the postmodern G. Francois Lyotard, the death of the author by Roland Barthes, what is an author by Michel Foucault. Postmodernism or the Cultural Logic of Late Capitalism by Frederick Jameson. These all writers, these all uh, books are important. That's why you have to know about them in detail. So do your own research related to it. So what will be the correct answer of 7? Correct answer is A. That means answering the question, what is the postmodern G. Franz, Franzkois Lyotard. Okay. Then we have uh, number eight. It says, which of the following novelists does not show fictionality of the text? Which of the following novelists does not show fictionality of the text? John Fowles, Kurt Vonnegut, Lawrence Stern, George Meredith options are like this so the question is which of the following the novel novelist does not show fictionality of the text correct answer is d that is george meredith george meredith he was the novelist who did not show fictionality of the text next which of the following american novels was used by Edward Said to illustrate American imperialism. Which of the following American novels was used by Edward Said to illustrate American imperialism? You must have heard his name Edward Said. If you haven't, then you should right now.
Options are the last of the Mohicans, the old man and the sea, beloved Moby Dick. All are very important. Know about it. 9. Correct answer is D. That is Moby Dick. Okay. True Moby Dick. True Moby Dick. Uh, Edward Said has illustrated American imperialism. Next question is number 10. It says, who links literary genres to seasons who links literary genres to seasons Northrop Fry, Richard Chase, Maud Bodkin, Francis Ferguson correct answer is Northrop Fry. okay he has linked literary genres to seasons number 11 it says which of the following is not a book of uh, not a book by Stephen Greenblatt which of the book is not a book sorry which of the following is not a book by Stephen Greenblatt will in the world Hamlet in purgatory beginnings marvelous possessions 11 uh, correct answer is C that is beginnings C beginnings so beginning is the book which is not written by Stephen Greenblatt. Number 12, it says, Camera Lucida. Camera Lucida. It is a book by whom? Roland Barthes, John Berger, Laura Mulvey, Jax Derrida. Number A is the correct answer. Roland Barthes. So that's why I'm saying you must know about Roland Barthes. You have to know. Number 13. Number 13, it says, It is about time that criticism and philosophy acknowledge the disappearance, disappearance or the death of the author. Which critics is credited with the statement? Let me repeat it. It is about time that criticism and philosophy acknowledge the disappearance or the death of the author. Which critic is credited with the statement? Jax Laka, Michel Foucault, Harold Bloom, Jax Derrida. Correct answer is number B, that is Mike Michel Foucault. Michel Foucault was the person who uh, said it, it is about time that criticism and philosophy acknowledge the disappearance or the death of the author. Number 14. Match the writers in list 1 with their ideas in list 2. So we have two lists. In list 1 we have writers. In list 2 we have theories. Raymond Williams, J. L. Austin, Mi uh, Michel Foucault, Michael Bakhtin. Speech Act Theory, Dialogism, Dialogism, Marxism, post tucheralism So, correct options are like this. Correct option will be number B, that means A3. Raymond Williams, post structuralism. 2 1. JL Austin, Speech Act Theory. 3 4. Michel Foucault, post structural. Uh, wait, wait. I did a mistake. It was 1 3. R Raymond Williams is related to not post structuralism, he was related to Marxism. Then 2 1 J. L. Austin, it is related to speech sect theory. 3 4 Michel Foucault, post structuralism. And then 4 2 Michael Bakhtin, dialogism. Okay. Next, next question. Number 15. It is saying bracketing is a term used in phenomenological criticism to describe what? Meeting of the writer's world and the reader's world, meeting of the writer's world and the publisher's world, meeting of the writer's language and the re reader's language, meeting of the writer's world and the words of the writer's inner self. So, what is the correct answer of the term called bracketing? Correct answer will be number A that there is meeting the writer's world and the reader's world. Meeting the writer's world and the reader's wall so this is called bracketing
next question we have is in which of the book in which of her book books does julia kristeva introduce the idea of the abject a b j c t powers of horror desire in language revolution in poetic language the abject and the horrible so correct answer is a that is powers of horror okay so in this book julia kristeva has introduced the idea of the abject number 17 it says new historicism was fundamentally influenced by what marx henry lefavre derrida foucault correct answer is foucault okay new historicism was fundamentally influenced by foucault foucault is the correct answer number 18 it says with which theoretical movement can one associate the idea that a work of art should ideally be marked by distancing and est- estrangement rather than by cohesion and progression post colonialism the frankfurt school queer theory post feminism correct answer will be the frankfurt school if you don't know about it what is frankfurt school then you must know please go through it number 19 Which of the following books offer offers an argument diametrically opposed to T.S. Eliot's tradition and the individual talent? Which of the following books offers an ar- argument diametrically opposed to T.S. Eliot's tra- tradition and the individual talent? Geoffrey Hartman, Saving the Text, Literature, Derrida, Philosophy, Harold Bloom, The Anxiety of Influence. Paul Deman blindness and insight Mikhail Bakhtin the dialogic imagination so correct answer of the 19 number will be B Harold Bloom the anxiety of influence got it next question we have is number 20 it says longinus on the sublime begins with an attack on the incompleteness of the work of a greek rhetorician longinus on the sublime begins with an attack on the incompleteness of the work of a greek rhetorician called uh, anaximenes demosthenes isocrates cassilis cassilis on the sub- sublime number 20 correct answer will be cassilius this is the correct answer Cassilius Likewise 29 uh, 1 which of the following 19th century literators was the strongest proponent of the high culture mass culture dichotomy that was finally erased by postmodernism I will repeat the question which of the following 19th century 19th century literators was the strongest proponent of the high culture mass culture dichotomy that was finally erased by postmodernism it's a very important question you must know about it do your own research thomas carlyle john ruskin matthew arnold cardinal newman 21 number c is the correct answer that is matthew arnold okay matthew arnold he has done that uh 22 aristotle in his poetics mentions three painters one of whom represent characters above the average identify the painter porcenius polygnotus Dionysius Apollodorus what will be the correct answer Aristotle in his poetics mentions three painters one of whom represents characters above the average so we have to find out the painter correct answer will be B Polygnotus Polygnotus so after going through all these questions 
you must have now idea what kind of questions can and may ask so your study direction should go there then only you can qualify you have to make sure that you must know how to do your preparation because same to same questions will never come number 23 it says in tradition and the individual talent ts eliot speaks about about the working of the poet's mind in terms of which of the following modalities natural selection a chemical reaction a flowing river a cornucopia correct answer is b that is a chemical reaction okay in tradition and individual talent ts eliot speaks about the working of the poet's mind in terms of net uh, a chemical reaction so he, he so he believes that ts eliot believed that through a chemical reaction uh poet's mind work works number 24 it says horace in ars poetica states poets have ever had equal authority for attempting anything but not to such a degree choose the correct explanation of horace's statement it's a famous work by horace you must read so here horace defends creative liberty horace defends creative imagination horace defends poetic authority horace initiates a debate on decorum and poetic license correct answer is number d that is horace initiates a debate on the uh, on decorum and poetic license okay wait we have some problem here okay now it's done next question is 25 in number 25 the question is like this it says the fugitives and the agrarians they are linked to what new criticism at yale university new criticism at uh, vanderbilt university chicago aristotelians and new criticism new historicism at berkeley the fugitives and the agrarians did they are linked to what correct answer will be number 25 new criticism at vanderbilt university vanderbilt next question number 26 it says mark scorer in his technique as discovery considers art as different from life because art carries the stamp of what a objectivity universality dramatization and evaluation b impersonality technique discovery and evaluation c objectivity impersonality resonance and dramatization d objectivity paradox irony and displacement so which options which option will be correct correct option is a that is first objectivity will come then university uh, universality then dramatization and then evaluation so mark scorer in his technique as discovery he has con- considered art as different from the life because art carries this stamp number 27 it says in his poetics aristotle says that tragedies of most of the moderns are characterless what does aristotle mean by character in his poetics so you must have seen many questions are asked related to aristotle's poetics therefore without having adequate knowledge about poetics if you appear then your chance of passing is very low so do what you should do in his poetics aristotle says the tragedies of most of the moderns are characterless what does aristotle mean by character a neutrality of dramatic character b character with a moral purpose c character below the average 
the characters devoid of virtue correct address b that is character with a moral purpose character with a moral purpose <coughs> then we will go to uh, our next question it says which of these is not a contemporary theory of popular culture which of these is not a contemporary theory of popular culture thing theory string theory rubbish theory actor network theory all theory are important uh, please go through it 28 so correct answer is b that is string theory this is not rel related to a contemporary theory of popular culture string theory uh, number 29 it says longinus thinks that sublime consists in a certain loftiness and excellence of language longinian excellence of language refers to what let me repeat it longinus thinks that the sublime consists in a certain loftiness and excellence of language longinian excellence of language refers to what judgment and reason rhetorical skill in invention appropriateness of language structural craftsmanship correct answer will be number c that is appropriateness of la language so he has referred uh, excellence of language to it got it appropriateness of language number c okay similarly our next question our next question is number 30 it says the following quotation is from the prologue of a play okay so this quotation is a prologue of a play so uh, i would like to say one thing here that uh, whenever you read a play whenever always try to find out what, what is the subtitle of that play when this play was written and what is the genre of that play okay and then what is the prologue and epilogue of that play so this can be an external uh, elements but these are also important many questions are formed on the basis of this but this is also an example of that the following quotation is from the prologue of a play so it says pray would you know the reason why i'm crying the comic muse long sick is now a dying and if she goes my tears will never stop identify the play so we have to identify the play uh, from which play this prologue is taken a saying uh, sheridan's rivals goldsmith's she stoops to conquer uh, atrage is the man of mode congrips the country wife correct answer is b that is goldsmith's she stoops to conquer so these all plays these are very significant if you have no idea about the summary about the writer about the plot about the character then you must search about it number 31 it says under which of the following disciplines would a study of styles of dressing be placed under which of the following disciplines would a study of styles of dressing be placed? Semiology, Symbology, Semiotics, Semantics. So correct answer is A, that is Semiology. Uh, so through Semiology, we study uh, about styles of dressing. Number 32, it says, it says which, in which language did Namdeo Dhasal originally write. In which language did Nam Namdeo Dhasal originally originally write? Sindhi, Marathi, Gujarati, Odia. Thirty two. Number uh, B that is Marathi. Uh, from Marathi so many plays have been translated in English and those notable writers, notable plays you must know number 33 it says which of the following is originally composed as a graphic novel which of the following is originally composed as a graphic novel susan sontak's the volcano lover marzani 
ছাত্রাপিস পার্সি পলিস ই এল ডক্টর ডক্টরস রেক টাইম ইজামেল রিটস ফ্লাইট টু কানাডা অল আর ইম্পর্টেন্ট এন্ড ইফ ইউ ডোট নো হোয়াট ইজ গ্রাফিক নভেল দেন ইউ মাস্ট নো ইউ হ্যাভ টু ডু ইউর অন রিসার্চ অ্যাবাউট ইট দ্য কারেক্ট অ্যান্সার অফ থার্টি থ্রি উইল বি বি মারজানি সাত্রাপিস পার্সি পলিস পার্সি পলিস নেক্সট কুয়েশন ইজ থার্টি ফোর দ্য ফিল্ম অ্যাপোকালিপস নাও ইট ইজ এন এডেপশন অফ ওয়াট লিও টলস্তয় টলস্তয়স ওয়ার এন্ড পিস নর্মান মেলার্স দ্য নেকেড এন্ড ডেড জোসেফ হেলার্স ক্যাটস টোয়েন্টি টু জোসেফ কনরাজ হার্ট অফ ডার্কনেস দিজ অল রাইটার্স আর ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট ইউ মাস্ট নো অ্যাবাউট দেম হোয়াট দে হ্যাভ ডান এন্ড হাউ দে আর রাইটিং রাইটিংস হ্যাভ ইম্প্যাক্টেড দ্য কারেক্ট এনসার অফ থার্টি ফোর উইল বি নাম্বার ডি দ্যাট ইজ জোসেফ কনরাজ হার্ট অফ ডার্কনেস দেন উই The 2016 Hindi romantic film called Fitur, it is an exam, uh, adaption of what? David Copperfield, Jen Eyre, Great Expectations, The Moonstone, 35. Correct answer is number C, that is Great Expectation, written by Charles Dickens. You must know about uh, the writings related to Charles Dickens. Please go through it. Number 36. The 1979 film Junoon, it is a Hindi film, Hindi film. It, it is based on what? Raskin Bond's A Flight of Pigeons, Anita Desai's Fire on the Mountain, Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, Charlotte Bronte's Villetti. The correct answer of 36 will be A, that is Raskin Bond's A Flight of Pigeons, A Flight of Pigeons. Raskin Bond is an uh, Indian English writer who is known for his writings in English. So you must know his biography as well as his body of works. Number 37. 37 it says, which of this novelist was acknowledged by Salman Rushdie? Salman Rushdie is a big name in Indian in- English literature. especially in England or in Western Hemisphere. That's why you have to know ab- about him too and he is also considered as a diasporic Indian English writer. Salman Rushdie as his precursor in the use of chutnification of Indian English. So he has used uh, chutnification of Indian I- English. I Means someone has said like that. So who is that? Bhavani Bhattacharya, Monohar Mulankar, Jeevi Desan, Desani, Tabis Khair, Khair. So correct answer is C, that is Jeevi Desani. Jeevi Desani is the person uh, who, has, who has acknowledged Salman Rasdi as his precursor in the use of scientific certification of Indian English. Number 38, it says, Johnson's comedies mostly deal with his favorite theme of human greed. Which of the comedies listed below is an exception? Bhalpone, Epicone, The Alchemist, The Case is Altered. So, correct answer. Correct answer is B. Epico- Epicone is the correct answer. Epicone. Next question we have is which of the following are characteristics of Butler English? So if you have no idea what is Butler English, then you have to know. Okay? What questions can come related to Butler English? No one knows. So do your own research. So here it is saying which of the following are characteristics of Butler English. It has an object verb, subject o- word order, deletion of verb inflections, deletion of prepositions, the use of ing forms for par- uh, participles. 
options are A, B, C, B, C, B, C, D, A, D. So, correct answer is what? B. That is B, C. Only deletion of verb inflection and deletion of prepositions. Only these two are correct. This and this. Deletion of verb inflections and deletion of prepositions. Next question we have is number 40. It says the first national policy and on education was adopted in the Indian Parliament in which year? So here, this question is very important. Why? Because many questions will also be asked related to the history of Indian education system policy and its uh, policy implementation so you must know do your own research the first national policy on education was adopted in the indian Parla parliament in which year number 40 it is in the year 1968 and you must know that re recently a new education policy 2020 has come number 41 how did rk narayan Describe the kind of Indian English he wrote as brown English, as toasted English, as tanned English, as ing li ashish. Arkanaran, you must have uh, heard that is for sure, and uh, he is known for his works like The Guide, Swami, and his friends, like that. So, what is the correct answer for 41? Correct answer, correct answer is B. He has said that uh, Indian English he wrote is uh, as toasted English toasted okay as a toasted English number 42 it says here are four aspects of Indian psyche that do not translate very easily into English one culturally infected thought processes two language especially idioms three style or manner of speaking now number four humor so Raja Rao mentions three of these qualities in the preface to Kantapura as being difficult to render into English now we have to pick the correct combination from the options given below one two and four are correct one three and four are correct one two and three are correct one three and four are correct so here you must have seen that uh, that um, option three has come many many times so option three will be correct for sure but let us try to find out the answer 42 answer is c that there is one two and three are correct so here uh, you must have seen here and observe here how questions are asked okay here they have said like this that here are four aspects of Indian psyche that do not translate very easily into English. Then they have given four options, and now they are man mentioning a poem with a not poem with a novel and novelist, and then they are asking this. Look, so it's a very tricky question. So this kind of question you you can expect in more difficult way. In future, more difficult will come. Number forty-three. It says. Who wrote a seminar treatise on Dalit aesthetic? So, Dalit literature, a, it is also noteworthy. You must study about them too. You can expect many questions related to Dalit aesthetics. So, the question is, who wrote a seminal uh, treatise on Dalit aesthetics, covering also the imagery and idioms appropriate for conveying the Dalit experience? Arjun Dangle. Saran Kumar Limbale, Kancha Ilaya, Sarmila Reje, Reje. Number B is the correct answer. Saran Kumar Limbale. Next question we have is Which are the only two states in India that still use English as their only official la language? So this question is also important. Which are the only two states in India that still use English as their only official language? Manipur and Mizoram, Pondicherry and Sikkim, Meghalaya and Nagaland, Arunachal Pradesh and Nagaland. 
so what is the correct answer correct answer is number c and d okay meghalaya to used meghalaya and nagaland and here it is saying according to uh, the official an answer key arunachal pradesh they also use english as their official but nowadays they speak hindi to arunachal pradesh and nagaland number 45 it's a bit long question just like our uh, previous question which we have done some minutes ago here we have been given a line not one line it has so many lines it says but ah but oh thou terrible why wouldst thou rude on me thy ring world right foot rock lay a lion limb against me scan with dark some devouring eyes my bruised bones perhaps this may be the sonnet written in blood about a struggle raw in its blood and bone about which hopkins wrote to robert browning in 1885 which sonnet is this felix randall pied beauty carry on comfort prospice what is the correct answer of 445 correct answer is c that is carry on comfort this is the correct answer Number forty-six. It says match list one with list two according to the code given below. List one is say uh, is saying the ecstasy. List two we have so many lines. The sun rising to his coy mistress to good mor the good morrow. And options are like this. I will not read all the poem line. Now let's find out the answer quickly. The correct answer of forty-six will be A B C D. But all are correct here. It is seen. No, no, no. Uh, okay. The ecstasy. It is taken from. No, no. This is the poem. So the poetic line of this poem is. Um, for God's sake, for God's sake, hold your tongue and let me love. Then. the sun rising the sun rising will be it it will be uh, b3 three. three is the correct answer oh no 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 from sun rising actually no options are given i have not seen any lines re related to sun rising Okay, so this question itself is wrong. So if questions are wrong, then you will get the full mark. You don't have to worry in net. In SLAT too, and not only in SLAT, in all com competitive exams. Number forty-seven we have is in language learning monitor model. Hypothesis is attributed to what? Stephen Krasen. B. F. Skinner, Jean Piaget, Noam Chomsky. Number A is the correct answer. Stephen Krasen. According to which linguistic process did Latin poem "Pedem" become English? Put and Latin "centum" changed to English "hundred." Grimm's law, Werner's law, Clausius law, the Great Vowel Shift. Correct answer is Grimm's law. Okay, Grimm's law is the correct answer. Number forty-eight. According to Werner's law, the voiceless consonants P 
T and K changed to the voiced consonants B, D and G when they came after a stressed syllable, an unstressed syllable, a kesura, a diphthong. B, an unstressed syllable. This is the correct answer. Number 50 is, it says, so these all questions are related to ling linguistic. You have to know the basic terms, concepts related to ling linguistics. When the great vowel shift took place in English language, the vowel I and U changed to what? So see, yeah, I is changed to EI and uh, U is changed to EU. Okay, this is the correct answer. match the place in list 1 with their authors in list B. List A is saying BG the ambush, Antonio and Melida, Women Beware Women, The Revengers Tragedy, Thomas Middleton, Cyril Tornier, George Chapman, John Marston. What is the correct answer? 51. The correct answer of 51 will be A, that means Bershi the Ambush. It is related to George Chapman. B2, Antonio and Melida. It is related to Cyril Tornier. C1, Women Beware Women. It is related to Thomas Middleton. D4, The Revengers Tragedy. It is related to John Marston. Marston. All writings about these writers are very, very crucial. So, no error about them. Uh, next we have is number 50, 51 is done. We have now is 52. Which of the following sentences is not a tautology? T-A-U-T-O-L-O-G-Y, tautology. So, we have to find out which sentence is not a tautology. Options are like this. There is a lot of frozen ice on the road. The market was in close proximity to the bomb blast. The hotel room wasn't great, but it was adequate. Having a fitness test is a necessary requirement for the job. Totology. So C is the correct answer. Number 53, it is the B. Uh, number 53, it says, which of the following is not correct? Syllable is a part of word which generally has only one vowel sound. Syllable is a part of word which can never have one silent vowel letter. Syllable is a part of a word which can also have a syllabic consonant. Syllable can be meaningful word by itself. What is the correct answer of 53? Correct answer will be B, that is syllable is a part of a word which can never have one silent vowel later. Got it. Next question we have is who said good prose is like a window pane? Who said good prose is like a window pane? Elders Huxley, George Orwell, E.M. Forster, Robert Lind. Correct answer is B, that is George Orwell. So George Orwell he is known for his works like Animal Farm 1984. So please read his writings. Number 55, it says match the auto, uh, autobiographies in list 1 with their authors in list 2. Going home, Joseph Anton, Up from Slavery, Chronicles, Salman Nasdi, Booker T. Washington, Bob Dillon, Doris Lashing. Correct answer of 55 will be what? It is B. It means A4. Going home, Doris Lashing. So please uh, try to know about her work. B1, Joseph Anton, same, Salman Rasdi. C2, Up from Slash Slavery, Booker T. Washington. And then D3, Chronicles, Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan, you must have heard. Bob Dylan was an American songwriter, lyricist. He is known for his works right like tambourine man and then i have forgotten i've just heard so 
not so many very less song but his songs are very amazing so the correct answer will be b number 56 it says who and in which document sought to change the people of india in the following manner a class of persons indian in blood and color but english in taste in opinion in morals and in intellect who may be interpreters between us and the millions whom we govern so these lines are very important because this line is not a a uh, small line this line is said by a british person and it has had a long lasting impact in indian culture so who has said this line lord minto in the minto moral reforms 1909 lord cornavalis and the permanent settlement act 1793 lord macaulay and the minute on indian education 1835 the charles act on indian education 1813 so what well, what is the correct answer 56 correct answer is c that means lord macaulay and the minute on indian education this is the correct answer 57 this question is related to assertion and reason this kind of questions are asked pretty frequently so given below are two statements uh, statements one mark assertion and the other mark marked reason study them and choose the correct options below assertion a the essay is a literary form that is always subjective or personal r reason this is because it is not possible to develop an argument within such a brief space a is correct but r is incorrect a is incorrect but r, r is correct both a and r are correct both a and r are incorrect so find out correct what will be the correct answer correct answer is d both are incorrect both are wrong okay now let's move on number 58 it says which of the following characteristics is not true of the emerging mode of prose poetry which of the following characteristics is not true of the emerging mode of prose poetry it is written in paragraphs and not verses it uses images and figures of speech it uses rhythm but not rhyme it is expository and not emotive 58 number d is the correct answer it is expository and not emotive okay so this is not a characteristics related to emerging mode of prose poetry here is a statement followed by two assumptions with respect to the assumptions choose the correct options below statement an autobiography focuses on the sequence of events of the writer's life up to the point of writing while a memoir covers certain aspects of a writer's life so questions like this statement and assumption it also comes Fre- frequently it, it has been asked so you have to also solve many questions related to statement and assumption okay so we have read the statement now we will read the assumption it says number a uh, one the above statement suggests that an autobiography is chronologically ordered while a memoir is not ne- necessarily so the above state the above statement suggests that an autobiography is written in the first person while a memoir is written in the third person what is the correct option A one is correct, two is incorrect. One is incorrect and two is correct. Both one and two are correct. Both one and two are incorrect. So, find out. Fifty nine. Correct answer is A. That means one is correct. Okay, but two is incorrect. One is correct, but two is in incorrect. So one. Uh, the above statement suggests that an autobiography chron- chronologically or ordered. while a memoir is not necessarily so this is correct number 60 so here we have some of the opening lines from uh, bartold brecht's the messing of dialogues okay so this is a play if i'm not wrong so it says 
a stage on which the stage hand is slowly dismantling the set an actor a dramaturge and a philosopher are sitting on chairs the actor pours the wine into glasses and hands it round the actor all this dust makes it thirsty work sitting on a stage you'd better take a good swig choose the correct options from the ones given below the above passage is an example of di- digesis uh, or it is an example of mimesis digesis and mem- it's a blend of digesis and mimesis or the above passage illustrates neither digesis nor mimesis you tell me now what is the correct answer of number 60 correct answer is c that means the above passage is blend of digesis and mimesis so both are it's a mixture of both so now uh, please try to know about it what is digesis and what is mimesis it's your duty if you want to qualify then we have number 61 it says which was the first book of essays to be published bacon's essays la roche foucault maxims montaigne's essays pico della mirandolas on the dignity of man what is the correct answer 61 correct answer is c montaigne essays montaigne essays is the correct answer number 62 we have it ask us which of the following is not a detective character which of the following is not a detective character questions like this also ask repeatedly do different father brown reginald wexford and catrick mike hooligan correct answer will be c that is and catrick and catrick is the correct answer match the author with their works we have two two list chitra banerji diva karuni bharati mukherji hari kunjru sunitra gupta memories of rain the tree bright the forest of enchantment memory palace we have to now find out the correct answer of 63 correct answer is d that means one tree uh, chitra banerji the forest of enchantment okay two 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 bharati mukherji the tree bright three four hari kunjru memory palace four one sunitra gupta memories of rain try to know a- about them too because in future questions may come no one knows number 64 it says it it was said that uncle tom's cabin it was the book who, which started the great war if you have not read uh, uncle tom's cabin then you must do it it was said that uncle tom's cabin was the book which started the great war which is the great war referred to the american war of independence the spanish american war the american civil war the mexican american war what is the correct answer c is the correct answer the american civil war so these all wars are important because many literary works are based on these wars so please try to know about them too number 65 it says the works of franz kafka Franz Kafka it's a very prominent name if you have not heard then you have to so please go through his biography and works yeah uh, his famous works are like uh, metamorphosis and then uh, the trial so it was written in which language french german czech english correct answer is b it's written in german lang- language next question we have is which major english no- novelist was not included by f r lewis in his the great tradition which major english novelist was not included by f r lewis in his the great tradition jane austen joseph conrad henry james charles dickens six is the correct answer is charles dickens dickens he was not included he was a victorian novelist and he is known for his works like uh, pickwick papers and then a tale of two cities oliver twist many more 
okay then we have next question 67 it says Robinson Crusoe Robinson Crusoe was a famous novel uh, Robinson Crusoe the character lived in an uninhabited island for what 28 years 26 years 30 years 37 years so these kind of questions also ask be prepared 67 correct answer is a 28 years for 28 years the character Robinson Crusoe he lived in an un uninhabited island okay and he has also colonized many people there and uh, it is called that there was the first uh, colonization number 68 it says Eliza and Fraser uh, here, C 1798 to 1858, that might be timeline of part in that. Was a Scottish woman who was aboard a ship that wrecked at an island off the coast of Queensland, Australia, on 22 May 1836, and who was taken by the Bajala or Butchila people, which novel by Patrick White adapts her story. So questions are uh, questions like this are also asked. Okay, uh, how a novel is written? What is the history of it? Who has inspired? Uh, whom he has or whom the author has dedicated? Or why this was written? These kind of things are important. These kind of things uh, we often overlook. Oh, but that thing we should also remember. That will help us in clearing nets sets or MA in English entrance test or PhD entrance test okay so options are like this uh, memoirs of many in one a fringe of lips eye of the storm the aunt story 68 correct answer is B a fringe of lips L E A B E S the fringe of leaves 69 it says match the no novelist named in list one with their novels given in list two from the course given below, list one and list two. Margaret Lawrence, Rohinston, Rohin, Rohinton Mystery, Margaret Atwood, Michael on on that day. Cat's Eye, Cat's Eye, The Diviners, Warlight, such a long journey. So what will be the correct answer? B, A3, Margaret Lawrence, Warlight, B4, Rohinton Mystery, Such a Long Journey, C1, Margaret Atwood, Katsai, D3, Michael Ondadze, The Diviners. So these all are important writers. You have to know about them. Then only it will be uh, easy for you to clear the exam. Number 70, it says, Peter carries Jack Max. Peter carries Jack's, Jack Max is a reworking of Deacon's great expectations, but Carey also reinvents Deacon's as a young writer called what? Henry Pips, Tobias Otts, Percy Buckle, Marcy Larkin. B. Tobias Otts. Peter Carey's Jack Max is a reworking of Deacon's great expectation, but Carey also reinvents. Deacons as a young writer called Tobias Oates. Got it? Remember? Number 71, it says, which of the following cannot be called a Bildungsroman? Uh, Bildungsroman, this is a literary genre related to novel. So in uh, literary uh, writing, there are so many genres, like for novel, poem, drama, autobiography there there will be numerous uh, genre therefore you have to know about them too how will you know you just type list of literary genres related to novel drama like that then you will get to know and when you will read a poem read a novel read a drama always try to know in which genre that particular novel or literary writing is composed options are charles dickens david copperfield henry fielding's tom james jam joyce a portrait of the artist as a young man daniel defoe's robinson crusoe 
D is the correct answer. Daniel Defoe, Robinson Crusoe. So uh, this cannot be called a Bildung's Roman. Uh, in general, uh, in uh, Bildung's Roman, from uh, from a child to his adulthood or uh, old age, a character's development and journey has been described. Okay. So in in that case, like Jen Eyre, it can be called as Bill Bildung's Roman if I'm not wrong. So you have to find out about that. Next question we have is the Africans in Heart of Darkness. Uh, so African in Heart Heart of Darkness are viewed as what? They are seen as servile black men. They are viewed as enemies. They are presented as rebels by cards. Soon the enemies become criminals in the eyes of the whites. Okay, uh, and we have to now give the right sequence of these statements as they appear in the novel. A B C D B A D C A B D C C A B D. What will be the correct one? Seventy-two. Correct answer will be C. That means A B D C. A B D C. First, A will come. Uh, D will come B C okay A B D C hmm next question is uh, match the following books in list one with their settings in list two we have two lists list one and list two in this one we have uh, novel and in list two we have place name means uh, a a particular novel is based in which location that we have to find out so when you read a novel or drama you should also focus on that in which location that is based or set christopher uh, isner woods mr norris changes trains this is uh, also a famous work you have to know evelyn walks by boris george orwell's the road to wigan pier graham greens the heart of the matter then options are like this in list two means location names are lancashire and yorkshire berlin london and sierra leone these are the options correct option will be c that means uh, a2 christopher isner woods mr norris changes trains this is uh, 73 right uh, c a2 berlin so this is based in berlin uh, b3 evelyn walks while bodies london so this is based in london c1 uh, george orwell's the road to wigan pier it is based in Lang lancashire and yorkshire graham greens the heart of the matter it is uh, related to Four, Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone or what? Like this. Next question, seventy-four. It says, "The then I notice a small sketch in oils, on a panel, representing a woman, draped and blindfolded, carrying a lighted torch. The passage occurs in which of the following novels? Nostromo. If you don't know." Note it down and go through it. Lord Jim, Heart of Darkness, Victory. From where this passage is taken or it occurs. Correct answer is C. That means Heart of Darkness. So many questions are asked related to Heart of Darkness. You have to know about them too. 75. It says, uh, Why were Scott's novels called Waverly novels? Okay. Why were Scott's novels were called Waverly novels? Because most of them were said in the re re reason called Waverly, because they were named after Waverly, the first of the series of historical novels that Scott wrote, because they were later named after we Waverly, the last of the historical novels that Scott wrote, because the protagonists are wavering between different decisions. What is the correct answer? B is the correct answer. Because they were named after Waverly, 
the first of the series of historical novels that Scott wrote. This is the correct answer. Number 76, it's a very long paragraph, but let us read it. Uh, Sir Thomas Bartram uh, tries his best to keep the distinction between himself and, and his children on the one hand and his poor relative Fanny on the other. He says to Mrs. Norris, there will be some difficulty in our way to the distinction proper to be made between the two girls as they grow up. How to preserve in the minds of my daughters the consciousness of what they are and how without depressing her spreads too far to make her remember that she is not a Miss Bartram. Their rank, fortune, rights and expectations will always be different. Austin demonstrates the complexity of Sir Thomas Bertram, which of his characteristics is not depicted in the list below. Class consciousness, sympathy for Fanny, sense of decorum, misogyny. So these kind of questions are also asked. Please be careful. 76 answer will be D, that is sense of decorum. It is the correct answer. Sense of decorum. Maybe. Okay, uh, let's move on to number 77. It says, uh, in T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland. So many questions are asked related to wasteland. Please go through it. In T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland, the line, the dot dot death Shakespearean rag, reg is what? Taken from a popular song by Zen Book and Herman Ruhi, 1912. Taken from Tristan Sandy. Taken from Shakespeare and Shakespeare Our Contemporary by J Jane Cott, taken from a Harvard University production of Shakespeare's King Lear, from where it is taken. It is A, taken from a popular song by Jane Buck and Herman Ruhi in 1912. Pelgrave's Golden Treasury was published in the year 1861, 1867, 1865, 1869. What is the correct answer? Correct answer is A, that is 1861. In this year, uh, Pelgrave's Golden Treasury was published. 79, it says, I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness, starving, hysterical naked. Choose the correct option from the ones given below to explain the phrase starving hysterical naked. So we have to find out the phrase that explain it. The best minds were mad and hungry. The best minds were lacking in proper ideology and conviction. The best minds were unemployed and poverty stricken. Most of the best minds were passionate to the point of hysteria. What is the correct answer? 79. Correct answer B that is the best minds were lacking in proper ideology and conviction. Number 80, it says the first poet to have evolved the sonnet form is who? Giacomo da Lentini, Dante Alighieri, Guitoni de Arezzo, Guido Cavalcanti. So these names are tough for pronunciation for me, not for you maybe, but for me. And if I have pronounced wrong, I am sorry for that. I will try to improve 80 correct answer will be number a Giacomo da Lentini I think he was Italian if I'm not wrong please very verify it 81 it says as one a man has been is poor estate and climb up and wax fortune and there a bit in prosperity these lines from Chaucer's non priest tale bears the influence of what Horace Ars Poetica, Josephus Jewish Antiquities, Boethius De Consolo De Consolatione Philosophy, Strabo's Geographica. So correct answer will be uh, C that is taken from uh, not taken but uh, this line uh, are influenced by Boethius the con consola tione philosophie okay okay next question we have is 82 
it says which of the following characters has no mention in milton's paradise lost i think you have read paradise lost uh, it has first 10 books then it 12 books total 12 to 12 books you must know each books each character each plot okay so which of the following character characters has no mention in milton's paradise lost in book 1 mammon gabriel camos moloch so i think uh, gabriel let us find out yes gabriel is the correct answer it was not mentioned others character uh, other characters like uh, mammon camos moloch these are uh, mentioned and depicted elucidated there 83 it says match the cities in list 1 with the lines from the poems describing this series in list 2 okay we have to match the cities in list 1 with the lines from the poems describing the cities in these cities in list 2 so in list 1 we have eliot's london yet's byzantium plats san francisco azras paris then these are the lines so let's try to find out the correct answer of 83 correct answer will be c that means uh, a2 a2 elliot's london i think we are in rats alley where the dead men lost their bones got it and then uh, b1 yes byzantium it is related to the young in one another's arms bird in the trees those dying generations so you have to also remember poetic lines okay and if not lines then you must know that this line is taken from this point uh, for that you have to do your excessive study then only you will get to know line by line study okay then we have number c c4 plats san francisco is related to ghastly statue with one great toe big as a frisco seal then d3 as ezra pounds paris the apparition of these faces in the crowd p paddles on a wet black bow so these all are writer all poem are very very important so c is the correct answer number 84 it says who among the following wrote a poem giving the same title as john don did a benediction forbidding morning okay uh, similarly john don means likes john don um, one of the poems or oh, sorry one of the poets has also written a poem title a benediction forbidding morning this is a metaphysical poem so who was that poem uh, adrini rich dylan thomas sylvia platt sonia sanchez a andri andrini rich this, this is the correct answer okay so she has written a poem title a benediction forbidden mo mo morning just like john don 85 we have it's a long question it says thou was not born for that immortal bird no hungry generations tread thee down the voice i heard this passing right was heard in ancient days by emperor and clown in what sense is the bird immortal given below are four statements choose the correct answers so so many options are given i will not read all the lines uh, but if you want to read then i you can do it okay you just pause it pause the video and then you can take screenshot or just read this is the a option this is the b option this is the c option this is the d option a is correct b is correct c is correct c and d are correct so i will tell you the correct answer the correct answer of 85 is d that means c and d are correct all are wrong c and d are correct okay C and D. If the voice in the third line stands for the ni nightingale song, unchanged from age to age, contrasts with the tran transient passing night, then it is immortal. And then D. The bird is immortal in the sense that it, its song has been bringing joy to human beings. Uh, here, 
B double E it's a spelling error or printing error through the ages next question 86 it says in the first canto of Homer's Iliad Agamemnon Agamemnon is a famous character of this epic poem you must know about him in the first canto of Homer's Iliad Agamemnon declined to free the daughter of Crisis who afterwards invoked the god for revenge who is the god and does he fulfill uh, Cyrus or Crisis maybe Crisis Crisis prayer sorry for the pronunciation okay Crisis prayer 86 C is the correct answer Apollo saw his arrows uh, Crisis he was a devotee of Apollo god Okay. At the seven, it says, the first canto of Virgil's Aeneid. It begins with a great storm that destroys the fleet of Aeneas, but later the storm calms down. This natural event has been presented in terms of the battle of gods. Who are the gods involved? It's a bit long question. Let me repeat it. It says the first canto of Virgil's Aeneid begins with a great storm that destroys the fleet of Aeneas, but later the storm calms down. This natural event has been pre presented in terms of the battle of gods. Who are the gods involved? So many names are given. I will tell you directly the correct answer that is Juno, Aeolus, and Neptune. Juno, Aeolus, and Neptune. Okay, then we have next question. It says, A bright reply to wisdom. Wisdom's occult plane. A calm illuminator and flame. A bright reply to wisdom's occult plane. A calm illuminator and flame. These, the lines are from which poem? Sarojini Naidu's The Gift of India. Torudot's Lakshman. Sri Aurobindo's The Golden Light. Kamala Das. Bhansyam. So, while you read about English literature, do not forget to read the history and writings related to Indian English literature, okay? And also Northeast Indian English literature. So what is the correct answer? Correct answer will be C, that is Sri Aurobindo's The Golden Light. Sri Aurobindo is a notable uh, person. You have to know his work, his bio biography, okay? Next question we have is 89. It says, the Australian-born classical scholar Gilbert Murray. The Australian-born classical scholar Gilbert Murray is the original of source what? Marchbanks in Candida, uh, Cuisines in Major Bar Barbara, Professor Higgins in Pygmalion, Duke Dead in Doctor's Dilemma. What is the correct answer? Correct answer is number B. That means cuisines in Major Bar Barbara. Uh, that's it for right now. Uh, till our next video, I have stopped uh, till 89. We'll come back soon. And till then, do your best. Okay? And please be sure, whatever you have read, that will never come. But with your intelligent guess, with your connecting the dots you have to find out the correct answer got it that's why you have to read okay read a lot but also solve a, solve questions a lot that is the motto thank you hello viewers we have been solving some questions related to net english literature which will ultimately help us in qualifying English net or net English uh, in today's video we will resume resume our discussion let's do it so the first question of today's video is 42 42 number question we have been doing the same question paper it says for a text to be considered creative non-fiction, it must be factually accurate and written with attention to literary style and technique. Ultimately, 
the primary goal of the creation sorry the primary goal of the creative non fiction writer is to communicate information just like a reporter but to shape it in a way that reads like a piece of literary prose beyond these bare requirements it has the same responsibility as the novel or the short story to shape a piece of experience so that it moves from a tale of private interest to one with meaning for the disinterested re- reader after reading the above passages choose the option that is not an example of creative non fiction so we have got now we have to find out which is not an example of creative non fiction personal essay food writing descriptive writing automatic writing what will be the correct answer so correct answer is automatic automatic writing so automatic writing is not an example of creative non fiction similarly now we have number 43 it says in his 1925 english review of count harman kesarling's travel diary of a philosopher rabindranath tagore made an important observation on travel writing men should not merely realize the fact of differences traveling reaches its best truth when through it we extend our spiritual ownership in return for our gift of sympathy so here we we have got a new name that is harman kesarling so if you don't know him you must know please go through his biography his body of literary works uh, by extend our spiritual ownership in return for our gift of sympathy so through this line what tagore means number a saying convert the people of the country to which we travel to our own religion because we seem sympathize with them feel close to the people of the country to which we travel because we appreciate and understand them subject the people of the country to which we travel to our gaze because we sympathize with them write a treatise on the spirituality of the people of the country to which we travel because we appreciate them so what will be the correct answer so correct answer will be b it means feel close to the people of the country to which we travel because we appreciate them understand them okay next question we have is according to sq3r model of studying a text the three r stands for what read refresh review review remember re- refer read review retain read recall review so what will be the correct answer correct answer is uh, d it means you have to first read then recall then review read recall and re- review so you can use this in your studying next question we have is 45 it is uh m match the word words question so the question is match the words in list 1 with the languages from which they were lo- learned in list 2 So here we have words in list one, and in list two we 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 have lang- uh, languages from which these words are taken. So the first is caught, second is charged, third is power, and then the fourth is stamped. Spanish, French, Hindi, Greek. From which words, uh, from which language, these words are taken, or vice versa. Okay, wait. This is forty-four. I have forgotten to tell you forty-five. But after this, we we will go there. So, what is the correct answer of forty-six? Forty-six correct answer will be C. That is A three. Quote will be related to three. Quote is taken from Hindi. Okay. Then next we have is. Uh, B four charge is re- taken from Greek. From Greek we have taken charge. 
for charge then we have c2 power power is taken from france then d1 stamp it it is taken from spanish spanish language got it so c is the correct answer likewise uh, okay we have left one that we will now do it says which of the following is an effective filter in second language learning which of the following is an effective filter in second language learning so this question is related to general or fundamental linguistic which we must know so what will be the correct answer self confidence context motivation fluency so according to the official answer key the correct answer uh, is all all will be correct self confidence is also correct context is also correct motivation is also correct and fluency is all also correct and these all are an effective filter in second language learning but uh, if this kind of question come where uh, all options are correct then all will get full mark okay you don't have to worry now let's move, move on to our next question uh, it is according to which linguistic process did voice uh, voiceless fricatives become voice fricatives in the proto germanic language if they followed an unstressed syllable so here i would like to pause and would like to re remark that if you do not have a basic or fundamental idea concept about linguistic related to english then it will be difficult for you to solve a question in net exam in english therefore i request you to go through the fundamental questions related to linguistic or to study about uh, concepts related to linguistic it will be very very helpful for you so this question is also related to ling linguistic so it says according to which linguistic process did voiceless fricatives become voiced fricatives in the photo germanic languages if they followed an unstressed syllable a saying grimm's law b saying barner's law d c saying clage's law d saying the great vowel shift so if you don't know what is the great vowel shift what is clage's law barner's law grimm's law then now it is the time to deep dive into this thing do it immediately so correct answer of this question will be b that is barner's law barner's law next question we have is 48 this is also related to linguistic the great vowel shift occurred in the english language during which of the following periods this questions this question is often repeated okay therefore you must read it the proto germanic period in the second century ad from c 800 ad to c 1000 ad from c 1350 ad to c 1650 ad the great vowel shift occurred in the english language during which of the following periods what will be the correct answer so these all options are very uh, crucial okay therefore please research about it the proto germanic period uh, and second century ad these all are important and i have already mentioned the importance or the significance of great vowel shift what is the correct answer correct answer will be 48 d that is from 1350 ad to 1650 1650 ad so uh, du during this time the great vowel shift occurred in english language next question we have is 49 it says how did the word asteri come into being so we have a question it ask how the word asteri come into being or into existence it says a as an abbreviation of asterism second as an abbrevi uh, as an abbreviation of asterisize 
third as a pack formation from aesthetic as a loan word from medieval medieval friends what is the correct answer so this word as uh, it came into being from the word as a back formation from aesthetic aesthetic means you all know uh, if you don't know then please go through it aesthetic is a pretty uh, common word in literature uh, in literary analysis we often use this word it also used in other uh, art forms like in songs, in music, in painting, in drawing, like that. Next question we have is 50. It says the expression Swan Road is an example of what? The expression Swan Road, S W A N Swan R O A D Road. So, what? Uh, so this, what this word denotes? Uh, a, a is saying. Inscape, B saying canning, C saying pathetic fallacy, D saying synesthesia. What is the correct answer? So, correct answer is canning. Here too, I will reiterate that you have to know all about it. Like, what is inscape? What is canning? What is pathetic fallacy? What is synesthesia? Go through it next question we have is 51 it says in the Tintin comics Bianca Casta Fiori repeatedly refers to Captain Haddock as Paddock, Haddock, Padlock, Hopscotch, Dry Dock and Hamlock what are these examples of let me repeat it in the Tintin comics Bianca Casta Fiori repeatedly refers to Captain Haddock as Paddock, Haddock, Padlock, Hopscotch, Dry Dock and Hamlock. What are these examples of? A sing expletives, B sing John, Johnson's, C sing uh, Spoonerisms, D sing Neologisms. So, what will be the correct answer? Correct answer is number C, that is uh, Spoonerisms. So these all are again very significant okay you must do your own research you must know its definition example features so on expletives johnson uh, johnson's spoonerisms and neologisms do your own research next question we have is 52 it says it's a long question British commentators during the colonial period sometimes express amusement at the kinds of English used by their subject populations. Babu or Babu. So, Babu or Babu, this is a spelling variation. English of India attracted particular attention because it aspired to poetic heights in vocabulary and learning, despite being full of errors. So, linguistics today find a great deal in common between Babu English and the ornate style used by many British writers in past centuries. Which of the following statements can be deduced from the passage? So, this question is also related to linguistic history. Okay, that's why I'm saying you must know the basic concepts related to linguistic. So I hope you, you have understood the question. So now we will try to answer the question. It says which of the following statements can be deduced from the passage. Babu English was unlike modern English. B. Colonial masters appreciated Babu English. C. Babu English was used by government officials of Indian origin. D. Babu English was perfect English. So we have these options. A and C is a and C, A, B, C, B, C, D, C, D. What will be the correct answer? So here you you have seen a pattern. So in A2 we have C, B2 we have C, C2 we have C, D2 we have C. That means uh, whatever the answer, C will be correct. 
So after see now we have to find out other things. What can be correct? So the correct answer will be A. That is A and C. This is the correct answer. And C it will be Babu English was unlike modern English. And then Babu English was used by government officials of Indian origin. Okay, got it. Next question. Next question it says Doctrina Christi. Doctrina Christi, the first book to be printed in India, was printed in which year? Doctrina Christi, the first book to be printed in India, was printed in which year? 1687, 1775, 1578, 1492. What is the correct answer? 53. Correct answer is C, that is 1578. 1578 is the correct answer for this question. Okay. Next question we have is 54. It says, who satirically described English as India's anti tongue as opposed to its many mother tongues? Who satirically described English as India's anti tongue as opposed to its many mother tongues? Prabal Dasgupta, Braj Kachuru, Gail Ombet, Gopal Guru. So here, uh, these all four names, these all four names are not worthy you must know about them about their work about their concept okay many questions will come it may come in future related to these writers works so now we have to solve it so what will be the correct answer 54 so uh, this sentence or this phrase or this lines anti tongue it is uh, described by Prabal Das Gupta. Okay, Prabal Das Gupta. That means A will be the correct answer. Number fifty-five. We have. Uh, it says there is no village in India. However, mean uh, there has not a rich sthala purana or legendary history. What is the technical term for using bahasa words in an English text? So. This question is also related to linguistic. I will repeat the question. There is no village in India, however, mean there has not a rich sthala purana or legendary history. What is the technical term for you using bhasa words in an English text? A sing language admixture, B sing pidgin English, C sing uh, code breaking, D sing code switch switching. So these options language admixture pidgin english code breaking code switching these all are uh, fundamental terms re related to linguistic uh, you must know therefore have your concept clear okay uh, so what will be the correct answer 55 correct answer will be d that is code switching code switching okay Next question we have is who was the proponent of a major campaign against Indian writing in English under the rubric of what came to be called nativism. Let me repeat it. Who was the op proponent? Proponent means uh, a person who has pioneered it or one who has uh, led. Who was the proponent of a major campaign against Indian writing in English under the rubric of what came to be called nativism. Baljanda Nemade, Sunil Gangopadhyay, Nirala, Suryakanta Tripathi, U R Ananta Murthy. So what is the correct answer? Correct answer is 56 A. That is Baljandra Nemadi. He was the proponent of a major campaign against Indian writing in English under the rubric of what can be called nativism. Next question we have is uh, who is the author of the Indianization of English? So uh, in during your preparation you should uh, read many texts. If not texts then you must know how Indian English was progressed or how it has uh, how it has evolved and uh, it has uh, 
sin is revolution okay you must do it uh just like that we have one question it says who is the author of the indianization of english 57 mk naik braj kachuru r k bansal k r srinivasa ayangar these all these all names are significant do your own research about them correct answer will be b that is braj kachuru Bras Kachuri is known for his works in Indian English. You must know about him and his writings. Next question we have is according to uh, Baudrillard, the success of advertisements depends on their ability to conjure up a seductive hyperreality. Which of the options below is not a feature of hyperreality? I will repeat the question. It says. According to Baudrillard, the success of advertisements depends on their ability to conjure up a seductive hyperreality. Which of the options below is not a feature of hyperreality? Uh, a is saying it is the reflection of a basic reality. It masks and perverts a basic reality. It marks the absence of a basic reality. It bears no relation to any reality. What is the correct answer? Correct answer is A. It says it is the reflection of a basic reality. Got it? If you don't know who was Baudrillard or what is seductive hyperreality, do your own research. Fifty-nine. Next question is fifty-nine. It says a reading of a literary work that is determined by its effect or emotional impact on the reader has been termed. A reader of a literary work that is determined by its effect or emotional impact on the reader has been termed as what? Affective fallacy, aporia, intentional fallacy, dis dissociation of sensibility. What is the correct answer? These all options are important. I think this is related to literary criticism and literary theory. Correct answer of fifty nine will be A. That is effective fallacy. Next question is sixty. It says, under which of the following disciplines would study of emojis and emoticons be placed? Under which of the following disciplines would study of emojis and emoticons be placed? So options are semiology, symbology. semiotics semantics these all words are important you must know about them okay so the correct answer will be c that is semiotics okay semiotics is related to the study of emojis and emoticons got it okay next question we have is 61 it says which of the following is not a science fic fiction film so it is related to film now we which of the following is not a science fiction fi film necromancer avatar i think uh, avatar is a science fiction movie right uh, et et is also related to science uh, if i'm uh, not wrong it was directed by steven spielberg then number d vertigo not a science fiction film what is the correct answer correct answer here we have two correct answer a is also correct because necromancer is also not related to science and vertigo is not related to science so a and d will be the correct correct answer so avatar and et avatar was a uh, blockbuster movie uh, which was based on pandora and di directed by uh, James Cameron okay so if you have not watched this movie then you must watch so many qu questions related to science fiction or any fiction if uh, a movie ha has been adapted on the basis of that fiction then questions are often asked so you must also aware about that too 
62 it says who is the first bengali actor to perform a shakespearean character in a colonial theater in calcutta who is the first bengali actor to perform a shakespearean character in a colonial theater in calcutta girish chandra ghos besnam charan adhya amarendra nath sen ram ramendra nath podar so correct answer is b besnam charan adhya he was the person or the bengali actor who performed a shakespearean character in a colonial theater in calcutta 63 it says match the items in list 1 with their corresponding items in list 2 in list 1 we have uh, four words and in list 2 we have four okay so the last supper is re related to what Belzec, the ambassador's badge just like that in list 2 we have sarah sign cantata leonardo da vinci Hans Holbein. So, in in list one we have a painting name, and in list two we have painter name. If I'm not wrong, I may be wrong. Please verify it. Sixty three. Sixty three. Correct answer will be A. That means one. The Last Supper. It is related to Leonardo da Vinci. So. Uh, here i will add one thing that you must also know uh, the famous painting done by famous painters so do your own research related to it and then uh, two one belzac it is re related to saracine three four the ambassador is painted by hans holbein and four two batch is painted by Kantala that is A okay number 64 we have is uh, in an essay of dramatic poetry the play Dryden the play Dryden chooses to justify his defense of English drama is what uh, Epicone or silent woman the rival ladies measure for measure Samson Agonistes. If you don't know, what is this? What is essay of dramatic poetry? Then you are doing grave mistake. Okay, so you must know. So do your own research again. So now we have to find out the correct answer. Correct answer of this question will be uh, A. Ep Epicone or silent woman if I have done any kind of pronunciation mistake I'm sorry for that since English is not our native language that's why we have some problem and actually English is my fifth lang language but still I'm trying to do better I have been improving uh, 65 it says the 1966 film Dil Dia Dardlia is an adaptation of what so many qu questions are also related to Bollywood movie uh, which are uh, taken from English drama or related to English literature or Indian English literature whatever and this was a uh, popular movie called in 1996 Dil Dia Dardlia so this is an adaptation of which movie uh, it says Woodering Heights, Jude the Obscure, Silas Marner, Oliver Twist so what will be correct answer? Correct answer is Woodring Hits. Dil Dia Dardlia. So just like that, when you read about the place, major place, greatest place, popular place, you always you should also try to know uh, is there any movie in Hindi related to this play? Apart from Hollywood movie or English movie. Okay next question we have is raymond williams you must have heard his name if you know if you have not then you you must know his biography and his body of works he is known for his if i'm not wrong marxism okay raymond williams theory of cultural materialism was influenced by, in was influenced by what Foucault, marx derrida bakhtin so these all names are 
utmost important you must do your own research about them and their works so what will be the correct answer 66 correct answer will be b that is marx i have already told you marx karl marx uh, 67 it says who among the following describes science fiction as a gamut of spe speculation and social criticism hardware and exotic adventure let me repeat it who among the following describes science fiction as a gamut of speculation and social criticism hardware and exotic adventure who said this robert scholes and eric rapkin gert griffiths and helen tiffin paul deman eve kosovsky sedgwick what is the correct answer correct answer will be a that that is robert school and eric rapkin these two person has said like that 68 it says the concept of the rhizomic narrative was formulated by whom jean baudrillard jean Fran francois leotard gilles deleuze and felix guattari donna harawi jean or ja i don't know because this words are related to friends okay uh, so please verify it 68 uh, what is the correct answer so gilles deleuze and felix guattari they have formulated the concept of resumic narrative you must know and these all names are prominent names that you must know about their works do it next question we have uh, is 70 uh, no, uh, not 70 we have 69 which of the following personalities was the founder of the so society of quakers and a leader of the quaker movement in england george fox thomas allude richard davis william penn which of the following personalities was the founder of the society of quakers and a leader of the quaker movement in england so these names are also important do your own research so correct answer will be george fox george fox a is the correct answer number 70 it says i richards you must have heard his name if you have not then go through immediately i richards practical criticism inaugurated a new phase in the history of english critical thought what is the book subtitle so questions are formed like this okay and they will say about a writer and they they will talk about his works and then they will ask a question uh, which is very surprising just like this it says i richard's practical criticism inaugurated a new phase in the history of english critical thought what is the book's sub sub subtitle so what will be the correct one a study of critical judgment a study of theoretical judgment a study of literary judgment studies in poetry so correct answer will be 70c there is a study of literary judgment you must remember it a study of the literary judgment related to i richards and his famous work practical criticism 71 it says in a defense of poetry pb sally you must have heard his name he was a romantic poet from england and he you must know his works his poems uh, so let us repeat the question in a defense of poetry pb sally differentiates between reasons and imagination in all the following ways except one identify the exception so options are reason respects the differences and imagination the similitude of things reason is to imagination as the body to the spirit she saying re reason is to enumeration of quantities imagination is the perception of value of those quantities this saying reason and imagination are related to each other as a charcoal to fire so what will be the correct answer of 71 correct answer is d that is reason and imagination are related to each other as a charcoal to fire you must remember this famous line reason and imagination are related to each other as a charcoal to fire so this thing is said by we all know pb sally next question is 
uh, it is related to Plato. You must have heard his name, Plato. If you not, then go through his biography and literary works. It says, Plato's allegory of the cave occurs in which of the following? Uh, Phaedrus, the Symposium, the Republic, Ion. What is the correct answer of 72? Correct answer will be C, the Republic. You must have heard his text, the Republic. If you not, then go through it. You will get many information and you will be enlightened by it also. Okay, 73. Uh, it says, Longinus in his discussion on the first two sources of the sublime says that these two conditions of sublimity depend mainly on natural endowments. The phrase natural endowments re refers to what? Let me repeat it. Longinus in, in his discussion on the first two sources of the sub sublime says that these two conditions of sublimity depend mainly on natural endowments. The phrase natural endowments refers to what? A. Passion and grandeur of thought. B. Creative artifice. C. Prophetic quality. D. Aesthetic excellence. 73. What is the correct answer? Correct answer is A. That is passion and grandeur of thought. Grandeur of thought. 74. It says in his definition of tragedy, Aristotle uses the phrase pleasurable accessories, which means what? So, you must have heard the name Aristotle. You must also read his famous works called Poetics or other things also because he has con contributed in the field of literature also apart from other fields. So, please go through his works. Let me repeat it. In his definition of tragedy, Aristotle uses the phrase pleasurable accessories which means what? Grandeur of spectacle, rhythm and harmony or song use of dramatic episodes use of delightful statements what is the correct answer 74 correct answer will be b that that means rhythm and harmony or song so this is very important 75 we have is while discussing comedy in his poetics this is also related to aristotle so you must read about him too while discussing comedy in his poetics aristotle refers to the ridiculous the word ridiculous he has emphasized here which he de defines as what mistake or deformity not productive of pain comicality of thought and design admixture of satire and parody the element of fun exciting laughter what is the correct answer 75 the correct answer is a that means mistake or deformity not productive or pain so it says ridiculous 76 we have uh, now this question says who charged conrad if i'm not wrong con mean, means joseph conrad uh, who wrote a famous novel called uh, heart of darkness which is related to colonialism imperialism okay so uh, who charged conrad with excessive use of imprecise adjectives who charged conrad with excessive use of imprecise adjectives Ayanwa, Chinua Chibi, Edward Said, F.R. Lewis. Correct answer will be what? 76. So these all names are very important. Okay. Chinua Achibi, you must have heard his name. He was a Nigerian novelist. He is known for his uh, famous works like uh, uh, The Ant Hills of Savannah, A Man of the People, and then uh, Things Fall Apart. You must know. So correct answer will be D, that means F.R. Lewis. So you must also know about F.R. Lewis. He was a literary critic, if I'm not wrong, and theories too. Okay, <clears throat> next question. Next question we have is, the original title of Horace Arts Poetica is what? The original title of Horace's A.R.S. Poetica. Arts po Poetica is what? Perry Pomaton. Epistula and Pisans, De Poetica, Rhetorica, and Herenium. What is the correct answer of 77? Correct answer will be B, that is Epistula and Pisones. Epistula and Pisones. 78. Match the thinkers with the concepts. We have to match the thinker with their concept. In list 2, we have thinkers, and in list 2, we have concepts. Raymond Williams. Clifford Gertz, Hayden White, Michel Foucault, Cotex, Epistem, Stick Description, Structure of Feeling. What will be correct answer? 78. So correct answer is B. Okay. B is the correct answer. That means 
A4, Raymond William is related to structure of feeling. Then 2-3, Clifford Kurtz is related to uh, thick description. Then Hayden White, 3 is related to 1, Cortex. Mm, Michel Foucault is related to epistem. epistem. So these all writers, these all concepts are very important. That's why you have to do your own reading, research and study. 79. Who is the author of the book The School of Abuse? Who is the author of the book called The School of Abuse? Roger Ascombe, Stephen Hawes, John Skelton, Stephen Gusun. Who is the author? 79. So the author is Stephen Gusun. Please go through the other options. 80. Number 80 is, uh, is given below is an assertion marked as A and reason marked as R. As in assertion, we have this line. It says, Western post-feminism rejects the 20th century feminist movement as being entirely without value. So this is the assertion. Now we have the reason. Western post-feminism finds the contemporary Western women to be independent and empowered consumers. Western post-feminism finds the contemporary Western women to be independent and empowered consumers. Now, options are picked the correct options. It says both A and R are correct and R is the correct explanation for A. Both A and R are incorrect but the N, R is not the correct explanation for A. A is correct but R is incorrect. A is incorrect but R is correct. So, what will be the correct answer? Number 80. Correct answer is D. That means a is incorrect but r is correct got it so a which was assertion western post feminism rejects the 20th century feminist movement as being entirely without value this is incorrect but reason was correct it is said reason is correct it says western post feminism finds the contemporary western women to be independent and empowered consumers got it let's move on to the next question it says identify the odd one out from the following so this kind of question to you will get plenty okay ample of questions related to this type will be asked be prepared so we have to uh, identify and find out the odd one from the following options a is saying a prominent feature of modernism is the phenomenon called avant-garde b is saying a prominent aim of modernism is to challenge the norms of the dominant bourgeois culture Ceasing modernism in literature and the arts has parallels with the movement known as positivism. Number D, modernism involves a radical break with some of with some of the traditional basis not only of Western art but of Western culture in general. So what is the correct answer? We have to find out the odd one. 81. So C is the correct answer. Uh, apart from C, all are same. C is the odd one. It says modernism in literature and the arts has parallels with the movement known as positivism got it 82 it says which literary critic wrote that the language of poetry is the language of paradox which literary critic wrote that the language of poetry is the language of paradox we have four options wayne c booth clean brooks ellen tatty Alan Tate, C. S. Lewis. All names are important. Do your own research. 82. What is the correct answer? Correct answer is B. That is Clint Brooks. Clint Brooks is the correct answer. Next question. 83. Who said there is no cultural document that is not at the same time a record of barbarism? Who said? It's a famous line, quotation. There is no cultural document that is not at the same time a record of barbarism. Walter Benjamin, Julia Kristeva, Michael, Michel Foucault, Karl Marx. All names are important. Do your own research. 83. A. Correct answer is A. Walter Benjamin is the correct answer. 84. It says, what is EBSCO host? What is this? So, options are an anti-plagiarism software a text database a search engine a citation protocol so 
correct answer is B it is a tax database so if you don't know or if you have heard today about it then go through it you will get so many in, in uh, informations next question we have is 85 85 it's a match the following question it says match the following authors with their books so in this one we have author in this two we have book names Ellen Sowalter, you must have heard her name, Jack Starida, Edward Said, Roland, Roland Bart, Roland Bart. So these all names are important. Please do your own research. Books are S slash Z representations of the intellectual, the gift of death, a literature of their own. What is the correct answer? 85. Correct answer is A. That means Ellen Sowalter, you must have heard. Uh, she has written a text called a literature of their own two three Jack Tarita the gift of that three two Edward say Edward Said representation of the intellectual Roland Barthes writ, uh, has written as slash Z okay we have next question 86 it's a bit long it says literature is a body of text usually but not always recorded in writing using commonly recognized symbols while readers do seek newness in stories they tend to react badly to too much of it there is therefore both a cons conservative and an inventive element in good writing and the best authors find the right balance between them so which of the following conclusions does not follow from the above statement uh, options are literature is always made up of books literature is a social pursuit literature requires the use of shared quotes good literature is made up of traditional elements along with individual talent so 86 correct answer of 86 is a that is a literature is always made up of books this is the correct answer next question we have is 87 it says who employed the term uh, analepsis this term is important do your own research who employed the term analepsis to denote a flashback or the account of an event prior to, to the narrative in question options are gerard janet alan white g uh, sorry j hilly hills j hillis miller james fallon 87 option are this so what will be the correct answer number a is the correct answer gerald janet then we have 88 number question it says the philosophers have only interpreted the world in various ways the point is to change it uh, the philosophers have only interpreted the world in various ways the point is to change it with which critical theory would you associate the above statement structuralism post structuralism reader response theory marxist lit literature so these all are very important you must have clear idea about it so do your own research 88 so correct answer is d marxist literary theory very very Im important marxist literary theory 89 it says which is not a member of the frankfurt frankfurt school theodore adorn jersen habermas herbert marcus frederick jameson what is the correct answer correct answer is d frederick jameson okay frederick jameson is the correct answer that is d okay now we have another question it says 90 which of the following books is written by jarzen habermas sorry for the pronunciation I, I don't know how to pronounce it i have through my reading i have just pronounced it so options are the philosophical discourse of modernity the unfinished product of modernity the conservative movement in modernity the exclusion of other in modernity so which of the following books re written by jarzen habermas correct option is a that is the philosophical uh, the philosophical discourse of modernity this is the book written by jarzen habermas so that's all for today's video uh, in uh, upcoming video I will discuss from 91 and then we will proceed to another question paper. Thank you so much. Happy learning and happy preparation. Do your own research. Do not think that uh, whatever you have read, that, that will come. That will never come. Never ever that will come. Thank you so much. 
Hello viewers, in this video, we will try to solve MCQs related to English literature for our UGC NET exam. It will also be helpful for SLAT or SAT exam of different states of our nation. Apart from that, it will also be helpful for those who will prepare for CUE at English literature or uh, MA in English entrance test for different universities. So without further delay, let's begin our discussion. The first question of our discussion is this. Dr. Faustus wanted Mephistopheles to appear in the guise of what? I will repeat the question. Dr. Faustus wanted Mephistopheles to appear in the guise of what? A. A handsome young man. B. Helen. C. A. Franciscan friar. D. The Roman Pope. So what will be the correct answer? The correct answer will be number C. Okay. Number C, it is the correct answer. That is a Franci Franciscan friar. Sorry for the pronunciation. Franciscan friar. It may be different. I have tried my best to pronounce it. Okay. Uh, next question we have is Henry Vaughan's poem, The Retreat. Henry Vaughan's poem, The Retreat, expresses a desire to number A is saying return to the days of infancy, return B, return to the primordial age of creation, then option C, return to the golden age of past. Torellism. Number D. Return to the Middle Ages. So what is the correct answer? The correct answer is Henry Vaughan's poem The Retreat. It expresses a desire to return to the days of infancy. Okay. Number A is the correct answer. Number A. Return to the days of infancy. Likewise, we will now move on to number three. Number three saying, who considered the existence of a built-in language acquisition device in human beings? Let me repeat the question. Who considered the existence of a built-in language acquisition device, in short LAD, in human beings? Number A saying, Noam Chomsky, number B saying Edward Sapir, number C Block and Traeger, number D Roman Jacobson. So the correct answer will be, I think you are familiar with this name and that is number A Noam Chomsky. He is a very prominent figure in linguistic, not only in linguistic, he is also known for many other things. Now let's move on to other points, uh, other question, that is number four. Number four is saying, the architect who constructed pandemonium in book one of Paradise Lost is, number A is saying, Belial, number B, Mammon, number C, Moloch, or Moloch, number D, Mulsiber. So, what will be the correct answer? Let me repeat it. The architect who constructed pandemonium in book one of Paradise Laws is. So the correct answer will be number D. That is Mulsiber. Okay. Mulsiber is the correct answer for this question. Let's move on to the next question. That is number five. Number five is saying bring the old one out. We have to bring the old one out. Number A saying 4 PS, num number B the play of the weather, number C full and Lucrece, number D magnificence. 
what is the correct answer so we have to find out the odd one odd one means which is not uh, which is not similar to the rest okay so the correct answer will be number d that is magnific magnificence okay <clears throat> Now let's move on to number six. Number six is saying, uh, these hills called home, these hills called home, stories from a war zone. The hills are those of what? Number A, Kashmir. Now number B, Tibet. Number C, Northeast India. Number D, Jharkhand. So if you are from Northeast, then this will be pretty easy for you. Uh, this is a text written by Temsulao based in Nagaland. So the answer will be number C, Northeast India. Northeast India is the correct answer. Got it? Okay, let's move on. Number seven. Number seven question is this. It is saying, in which of the following methods do we move from sp specific situations slash rules to general situations? In which of the following methods do we move from specific situations rules to general situations? Number A is saying inductive method. method. Now number B is saying deductive method. Number C, discussion method. Number D, drill method. So, what will be the correct answer? The correct answer will be number A, that is inductive method. Let's move on to 8 number. Number 8 is saying, in which of the following play or plays does Shakespeare employ the use of mask? In which play Shakespeare has used mask? Number A saying, as you like it. Number B, a Midsummer Night's Dream. Number C, The Tempest. Number D saying, both B and C. So the correct answer will be, number 8, it will be number D. Both B and C are correct. Okay. B means a Midsummer Night's Dream and C means The Tempest. You might have read it. Let's go on. Number 9 is saying Horace lived during the time of emperor. So in uh, whose time Horace lived? Horace was a Roman poet. If I'm not wrong, I may be wrong. Please check it out. So 9 is saying Horace lived during the time of emperor. Number A is saying Lepidus. Number B Theocritus. Number C Augustus. Number D Max million one. So correct answer is number C that is Augustus. Augustus is the correct answer. Let's go on number 10. Number 10 is saying in Longinus idea of the sublime mimesis means what? In Longinus idea of the sublime mimesis means what? A is saying Imitation of real action. Number B saying imitation of classical points of excellence. Number C saying imitation of heroic characters. Number D saying imitation of grandiloquent diction. Okay. So the correct answer is number B that is imitation of classical points of excellence. So whatever I have discussed, if you have any doubts, Please verify it. Okay. Don't believe what I have said. You have your resources. Use it. But I have tried to give the best answer or the correct answer possible. Now let's move on to 11 number question. 11 number is saying, which of the following is not a characteristic of mystery plays? Mystery plays you must have heard. Which of the following is not a characteristic of mystery plays? Not a characteristic of mystery plays. So answer will be what? Number A saying they deal with biblical themes. Biblical means Bible. Number B saying they depicted the lives of saints. 
Number C is saying the characters in the plays personified abstract ideas. Number D is saying they were mostly performed in vernacular language. So let me tell you the correct answer. Correct answer is number C. That is uh, the characters in the plays personified abstract ideas. Let's move on to num number 12. Number 12 is saying, who orders the execution of Junior Mortimer in Marlowe's place? Marlowe's play, Edward II. Who orders the execution of Junior Mortimer in Marlowe's play, Ed Edward II? So, options are Edward II, Gabe Stone, Isabella, Edward III. What is the correct answer? Correct answer is Edward III. Hmm? Edward III has actually ordered the execution of Junior Mortimer in Marlowe's play Edward II. Got it? Very good. Now let's move, move on to number 13. Number 13 is saying, which of the following is not true about the Spanish tragedy? Spanish tragedy, you must have heard. It's a play. Which of the following is not true about the Spanish tragedy? Number A is saying, Balthazar killed the Spanish officer Don Andrea. Number B, Balthazar falls in love with Belle Imperia. Number C, Balthazar was avenged by Hieronimo at the end of the play. Number D is saying, Hieronimo fell in love with Belle Imperia. So the correct answer is number D, that is, Hieronimo fell in love with Belle Imperia. Number 14 is saying, one of the sources of Shakespeare's The Winter's Tale is what? One of the sources of Shakespeare's The Winter's Tale is what? A. Endymion, number B, The Old Wife's Tale, number C, Pandosto, number D, Rogel Yande. Sorry for the pronunciation again. Okay. Okay, so what will be the correct answer? Correct answer will be number C, that is Pandosto. Pandosto is the correct answer. Number 14, oh sorry, no, number 15, that is Porphyria's Lover was published in dramatic ly lyrics paired with another poem under the title Madhouse Cells. The other poem is what? Two in the Campagna, Women and Roses, Caliban Apun Sarabos, Johans Agricola in Meditation. So what is the correct answer? Correct answer is number D. Okay. Number D is saying Johans Agricola in Meditation. Number 16 is asking about Postmodernism. Postmodernism, which emerged in the 1990s, signals a return to what? The European Enlightenment, the culture of effect of the age of sensibility, the archetypal paradigms of Northrop Friar, Fry, the modernist avant garde. 16. So, correct answer of 16 will be number B, that, that is the culture of effect of the age of sensibility. Number 17. Number 17 is related to Newgate fiction. It says the genre Newgate fiction derives its name from Newgate calendar, which was the source of most of the stories of such fiction. Newgate street, from where such fiction were usually published. Newgate, an imaginary character who popularized these fictions, those works which were invariably published by Newgate publishers. So, what will be the correct answer? So correct answer is number A, Newgate calendar, which was the source of most of the stories of suspect fiction. It is the correct answer. Number 18 is saying, which of the following place is not by Manjula Padmanabhan? So correct answer is princess. Okay. Now we have is 19. Who among the following is not a structural narratologist? Who among the following is not a structuralist? Sorry, 
ए स्ट्राक्चारेल नेरेटोलजिस नट डट फरगेट एबाउट नट इट्स ए भेरी ट्रिकी वे टू फूल द केन्डिडेट सो द कारेक्ट एन्सार उल बी लुइस एल्थेजर यू अल नो लुइस एल्थेजर हि वज रिलेटेड टू मार्क्सिजम सो इज नट कानेक्टेड टू स्ट्राक्चारेल नेरेटोलजिस नम्बर टूवेंटी द शक अफ एराइल कन्टेन्स रिफ्लेक्शनस ऑन पोस्ट कलोनियल एक्सपीरियस अफ वाट द शक अफ एराइल कन्टेन्स रिफ्लेक्शनस ऑन पोस्ट कलोनियल एक्सपीरियस अफ वाट मीना एलेक्जेंडर नीराज सी चौधरी रिटिका वजेरानी देन डि बाशा बी फ्राशिर सो कारेक्ट एन्सार इज मीना एलेक्जेंडर दिस इज द कारेक्ट एन्सार got it very good now let's move on to role uh, question number 21 it it says my india this is a series is a series of autobiographical anecdotes by whom mahatma gandhi jim corbett rk narayan b s naipaul so correct answer is jim corbett you must have heard his name jim there is a famous national park called jim corbett national park that is situated in uttarakhand if i'm not wrong so he was if i'm not wrong from scotland england scotland and he was a hunter next 22 the subtitle the letter killet of hardis jude the obscure is taken from what the old testament sophocles oedipus rex shakespeare's julius caesar and the new testament the subtitle the letter killet of hardis jude the obscure is taken from which book then so the correct answer will be the new testament new testament if you are christian then you you will know that it is related to bible okay so this is related to christian christian religion okay the next question is 23 who coined the term cyber Cooley, who coined the term "cyber cooley" to denote call center workers in India, claiming that they are as exploited by Western multinational multinationals as plantation workers from Bihar were exploited in the West Indies by their colonial masters. Who said this, and who coined this term? Cy cyber cooley, Ramchandra Guha, B S Naipaul, Harish Tri Trivedi. Arun Dhati Roy. So, what is the correct answer? Correct answer is C. That is Harish Trivedi. Harish Tri Trivedi is the correct answer. Okay, twenty-four. <clears throat> Number twenty-four. So, these kind of questions are often given and often repeated, though the context will not be same. But this kind of I am just giving you a model. Okay. You can expect this kind of question in SLAT, NET, SET, MA in English entrance test. Okay, so the question is given below are two statements: one mark assertion that is A, and other as reason that is R. Study the statements and choose the correct option. Assertion is saying the postmodern concept of hyper reality gestures towards a transcendent reality. this is the assertion and re reason is saying this is because postmodernism is deeply imbued with a desire for transcendence so what is the correct answer 24 correct answer before giving you the correct answer let me read the options a is saying both a and r are correct both a and r are incorrect Uh, a is correct but r is incorrect a is incorrect but r is correct so the correct answer will be 24 that is b both a and r are incorrect okay both a and r are incorrect both a and r are incorrect okay Let's move on to number twenty-five. Number twenty-five. It's a little bit long question. That is, bring out the correct match between the authors in list one and their works in list two. So two lists are given: list one and list two. 
and li in list one we have book name and in list two we have author name so let's find out number a is saying of mim mimicry and man the climate of history in a planetary age the other side of silence ecology and the politics of survival then authors are Deepesh Chakravati, Urvasi, Butalia, Homi Ke Bhava, Bandana Shiva. So, options are like this. So, without further delay, I will give you the answer because this kind of question, in this kind of question, uh, you cannot use your intelligence. If you know, then you know. That, that's all. So, the correct answer will be B. That is A will be 3. Okay, let me. Okay, so uh, B A three of mimicry and man it is related to three homi ke bhava. B one that is the climate of history in planetary age that is Deepesh Chakraborty. Then C two the other side of silence Urvasi Butalia D ecology and the politic politics of survival that is four vandana shiva let's move on to number 26 number 26 is saying which of the following is not a play by aeschylus uh, which of the following is not a play by aeschylus i may have not done the correct pronunciation please verify it so options are agamemnon the liberation bearers the human days the antigone so what is the correct answer so the correct answer is number d that, that is antigone all other plays are written by him except the antigone because antigone is written by you all know sophocles number 27 it is saying in which text on popular culture does Michael Thompson state that ideally an object should reach zero value and zero expected lifespan, but in reality, it continues to live. Sorry, it continues to live in a timeless and valueless limbo. So who said this? Uh, sorry, not who who said this. Let me repeat the question. In which text on popular culture does Michael Thompson state that? Ideally, an object should reach zero value and zero expected lifespan, but in reality, it continues to live in a timeless and valueless limbo. So, what is this theory about? Means, what is the name of the theory? So, the correct answer is Rabbi's theory. Okay, I have hard for the far, uh, first time did this thing rabbi's theory okay let's go to 28 28 uh, here we have to match match the terms in list one with the theoretical movements to which they belong in list two this one is saying effective fallacy number b aporia number c compredor number d focalization list two post-colonialism narratology new criticism post-colonialism so what is the correct answer correct answer is a that means uh, effective fallacy is related to new criticism then aporia is related to post-structuralism then uh, compredor is related to post-colonialism uh, post then focalization is related to narratology you should know it if you don't know then please go in detail what kind of question will come no one knows so be prepared then we have 29 that it is the little bit same we have to match the author with the writer or with the thing that has been give, given match these american authors in list one with the schools of multicultural american literature to which they belong in list two this one is saying sandra Cisneros, number B, Jis Jan, number C, Sarman Alexi, number D, Chang Re Li. List two, Korean American literature, Native American literature, Chinese American literature, C, Shikano A literature. Okay, so 
what will be the correct answer so the correct answer will be number a that is a for sandra cisneros it is related to c c cano literature number b three that is jish jen is related to chinese american literature c2 sermon alexi sermon alexi is literature related to native american literature and the d1 that is chang re li is related to korean american literature number 30 in a defense of poetry sally contrast reason and imagination he says that imagination is creative how does he describe reason let me repeat it in a defense of poetry pb shelley has contrasted reason and imagination he says that imagination is creative how does he describe reason number a constructive contemplate contemplative persuasive productive so correct answer is number b that is contemplative this is the correct answer number 31 uh, here are the names of some women poets felicia Hemans, anna uh, Leticia Barbold, Anna Seward, Charlotte Smith. To which period of English literature do they belong? Okay, we have to find out. So, four options are given the Elizabethan, the Restoration, Romantic, the Victorian. So, what will be the correct answer? Correct answer is number C, that is the Romantic period. If you want to know more, then please go through it. In detail comprehensively number 32 which of these British philosophers is most directly connected with age of sensibility which of these British philosophers is most directly connected with age of sensibility John Locke David Hume Bishop George Berkeley the Earl of Shaftesbury so what is the correct answer so correct answer will be the Earl of Shaftesbury the Earl of Shaftesbury this is the correct answer number 33 saying an advertisement jingle goes so there is an advertisement called uh, the roaming wala job the deadline wala job or are you living in the market wala job words like market wala are e examples of what code mixing code switching code breaking code making so what is the correct answer tell me they, this is very simple if you have studied linguistic then probably you must have probably you have read it so the correct answer is code mixing if you don't know about code, code mixing please go through it it is very pivotal for you okay very good now let's move on to number 34 it's a little bit long question but let let us be very patient and try to solve it number 34 is saying here is a statement followed by two assumptions read them carefully and choose the correct option statement in a position paper dated 2001 on the teaching of english in higher education ugc stated both the english honors course and the general level should include world englishes instead of being confined to british literature assumption a is saying Number A, UGC wishes to inculcate a global perspective in students through the study of world literature. Number two is saying UGC feels that British literature is not good enough. Okay, now you find out the answers. Here it is saying A is correct but two is, uh, sorry, uh, one is correct but two is incorrect. One is incorrect but two is correct. Both and uh, one and two are incorrect both one and two are correct so what is the correct answer according to you okay uh, 34 34's answer will be that is a a is correct means yojisi wishes to inculcate a global perspective in students to the study of world literature but b is not correct yojisi you, you feels that british literature is not so good or not good enough this is pragmatically also not good right that's all number 35 35 is saying the formula for calculating impact factor is what the formula for calculating impact factor is what a dividing the number of citations in the 
journal in the two previous years by the total number of articles published in the same journal in two previous years and there are so many options are given but i will not read all those let me give you the correct answer directly the correct answer is 35a that is dividing the number of citation in the journal dividing the number of citations in the journal in the two pre previous years by the total number of articles published in the same journal in two previous years that's all got it okay let me mark it got it i have marked it now let's move on now 36 36 is saying which of the following is not a plagiarism software which of the following is not a plagiarism software or plagiarism software number a urkin oh sorry urkun this is right this is a software related to plagiarism number b turintin this is also correct here noticing right so uh, c and d i don't know i have to find it so 36 answer will be number d Ramini. Ramini is not a software. Means not a software related to plagiarism. And authenticate. Authenticate. This is plagiarism software. Number 37. The author who claimed to have blended two kinds of romance, the ancient and the modern, is what? The author who claimed to have blended two kinds of romance, the ancient and the modern, is Horace Walpole, Clara Reeve, Anne Radcliffe, Edgar Allan Poe. So what is the correct answer? Correct answer is Horace Walpole. Horace Walpole is the correct answer. He is the author who claimed to have blended two kinds of romance, the ancient and the modern, in his writings, in his literary works. Then we have is 38. 38 is saying, The Drabble is a name for what? Mini saga, micro fiction, sudden fiction, flash fiction. So the correct answer is, it is saying, according to official answer key, that is B and D. That means micro fiction and flash fiction. Okay. So if questions are wrong so it means if answer options are wrong then you will get the mark you, you don't have to worry so here uh, the correct answer is micro fiction and flash pit flash fiction flash fiction sorry then 39 is saying the murders in rue morgue was written by whom the murders in rue morgue arthur conan doyle edgar Allan poe guy de Mushapi, Mushapa Agathi Christie. So what is the correct answer? Correct answer will be number B that is Edgar Allan Poe. You must have read his works. Very fascinating writer. Number 40. In an apology for poetry, Sydney claims that poetry is a speaking picture which an ancient authority is he invoking here speaking authority sorry in an apology for poetry sydney claims that poetry is a speaking picture which ancient authority is he invoking here play to aristotle horace longinus so the correct answer is number c that is horace so he is talking about horace uh, that's all for today now use let's wait for our next video and from our next video we will discuss the rest questions okay keep on studying keep on solving the questions and then one day you will be qualified thank you so much we have been discussing about ugc net english preparation so in today's video we will resume our discussion with question number 41 the question number 41 it says the book the prison house of language a critical account of structuralism and russian formalism this book was written by whom four options are given terence hawks jonathan color vladimir prop frederick jamsons 
so what is the correct answer so the correct answer is 41 d that is uh, frederick jameson he was the writer next question is uh, when was the globe theater first constructed when was the globe theater first constructed options are 1585 1593 1599 and 1603 so the correct answer is number c that is 1599 it is the correct answer then we have 43 number question and it says level 2 plagiarism is what level 2 plagiarism is similarity up to 10 percent similarity from 10 to 40 percent similarity from 40 to 60 percent similarity above 60 percent so what will be the correct answer correct answer is level 2 plagiarism is similarity from 40 to 60 percent 40 to 60 person is called as level 2 plagiarism then we have is number 44 it says which english poet reported on the partition of india as a bbc correspondent i will repeat the question which english poet reported on the partition of india as a bbc correspondent w h auden louis mcneese stephen spencer philip larkin so the correct answer is number b louis mcneese louis mcneese is the correct answer then we will move on to our next question uh, our next question is related to 45 okay. uh, 45 is saying which australian novel of patrick white is based on the life of the 19th century prussian explorer and naturalist ludwig lane's heart sorry for the pronunciation please bear it verify it i will repeat the question again it says which australian novel of patrick white is based on the life of the 19th century prussian explorer and naturalist ludwig leichhardt options are a fringe of leaves number b boss number c the eye of the storm number d tree of life 45 what will be the correct answer correct answer is number b that is boss boss is the correct answer number 46 it says which tale in chaucer's the canterbury tales is in prose which tale in chaucer's the canterbury tales is in prose prose okay so uh, here i would like to mention one thing and that is geoffrey chaucer's questions means questions related to geoffrey chaucer and especially the canterbury tales it has been asking again and again so please focus on the canterbury tales okay each and every tales in detail then only there will be some kind of ray of hope so what is the correct answer correct answer will be what options are the monk's tale the parson's tale the wife of the wife of bath's tale the nun priest tale so correct answer is number b okay number b that is the parson's tale similarly we have 47 number question it says the translation of om prakash balmikis juthan is done by whom the translation of om prakash balmikis juthan is done by whom vikram kedas lakshmi holmstrom arun p Mukherjee, gail ombat so what is the correct answer 47 correct answer is c arun p Mukherjee. arun p Mukherjee is the correct answer then we have 48 number question it says who divided modern writers into two camps called the edwardians and the georgians the question is again i am repeating it who divided modern writers into two camps called the edwardians and the georgians options are Virginia Woolf, T.S. Eliot, F.R. Lewis, George Orwell. So what is the correct answer? The correct answer is Virginia Woolf. Virginia Woolf is the correct answer. Next question it says, it says, Who among the following call the novel The Bright Book of Life? 
who among the following call the novel the bride book of life who called it james joyce aldous huxley virginia wolf ds lawrence so what is the correct answer correct answer is number d that is ds lawrence he is the american writer if i'm not wrong i'm not sure okay please check it out and he has written the famous works like lady charlotte's lover sons and lovers the rainbow like that and he has said a uh, novel as the bright book of life next next we have the house of sorry the house man of dawn is a novel by native american writer that is true now who is the writer james wells leslie mormon silco and scott Mo- momade louis ed edrich who is the writer correct answer is n scott momade n scott Mo- momade has written this famous work called the house made of dawn next question this is a very recent news and you must know also about recent literary events awards or anything that is related to literature it says gitanjali sri's novel tomb of sand has received the international booker prize 2022 it is an english translation of a hindi novel by sri the translator is who George Clooney, Tahamina Anam, Bikram Chandra, Deji Rockwell. So, what is the correct answer? 51. So, correct answer is D. That is Deji Rockwell. Deji Rockwell is the correct answer. Okay, next question we have is 52 it says which south asian african novelist dealt with eliza fraser story from a post-colonial perspective let me repeat the question again which south african no- novelist dealt with the eliza fraser story from a post-colonial perspective it says andrew brink jm koji alan Patton, damon galgut who is the correct one so correct answer is that is andrew brink a okay 53 it says which literary theories is not associated with post-structuralism which literary theories is not associated with post-structuralism so if you don't know what is post-structuralism or structuralism then you must know please try to know about it in detail then only if questions like this come then you will be able to answer it otherwise it will be pre- pretty difficult for you options are julia kristeva jacks lakha paul de man ferdinand de saucer so what is the correct answer correct answer is ferdinand de saucer he is not related to post structuralism okay then we have number 54 it says who among the following is the creator of the fictional character neil ratan jamindar of ras khali who among the following is the creator of the fictional character character neil ratan comma jamindar of ras khali options are Manju Kapoor, Jhumpa Lahiri, Amitabh Ghosh, Arvind Adiga. Okay. So what is the correct answer? Correct answer is Amitabh Ghosh. He is the creator. You must have read his famous work, The Shadow Line. Okay. And you, you must know what kind of things he has written and what kind of prizes he has won. That is very important. So options are this and I have already told you the answer that is Amitabh Ghosh. He is the creator of the fictional character called Neil Ratan Jamindar of Rashkali. Next, who wrote the following? There are in our existence spots of time which with distinct preeminence retain a re- renovating virtue. Let me repeat it. There are in our existence spots of time which with distinct preeminence retain a renovating virtue. Sir Philip Sidney, John Don, Alexander Pope, William Wordsworth. So what is the correct answer? 
So 55 numbers, correct answer will be William Wordsworth. William Wordsworth, he has said that there are in our existence parts of time which with distinct preeminence retain a renovating virtue. Next, 56, it says, who is the first New Zealander to win the prestigious Booker Prize? Who is the first New Zealander to win the prestigious Booker Prize? Janet Frame, Carrie Halm, Halm, Maurice G. Dorothy Eden. Who is the correct answer? 56. Let me repeat it. Who, who is the first New Zealander to win the prestigious Booker Prize? Janet Frame, Carrie Halm, Maurice G. Dorothy Eden. So correct answer is B, that is Carrie Halm. I don't know the correct pronunciation, but I have tried my best. I'm sorry for it. Number 57, it says in the Canterbury Tales, I have told you that Canterbury, related to Canterbury Tales, there are many questions that has that have been asking for a long time and you must focus on this. In the Canterbury Tales, who narrated the tale of Melibius during the pilgrimage? Let me repeat it. In the Canterbury Tales, who narrated the tale of Melibius during the pilgrimage? The Franklin, the Reeve, the Plowman, Geoffrey Chaucer. What is the correct answer? The correct answer is the writer himself, Geoffrey, Geoffrey Chaucer, and he is also called the father of English literature or poetry. I have a little bit confusion, but he is called as father of English something. Uh, number 58 it says who wrote the book structuralist poetics who wrote the book structuralist poetics henry james jonathan Kaller, jacks derrida roman jacobson who wrote, wrote the book called structuralist poetics very very Im important you, you should know it and all these writers are very important if you don't know them then definitely search about them and try to know what they have done what kind of works they have created so the correct option is Jonathan Color. Next question is number 59. It says Dr. Samuel Johnson's edition of Shakespeare appeared in Dr. Samuel Johnson's edition of Shakespeare appeared in which year? 1752, 1760, 1765, 1791. What is the correct answer? Correct answer is C, that is 1765. This is the correct answer. Then we have number 60. It says, which of the following is not an author level metric? Which of the following is not an author level metric? H index, G index, Google Scholar, uh, E gen factor, E gen factor. So what will be the correct answer? 60. The correct answer is number C, that is Google Scholar. Google Scholar, it is not related to author level metric. Got it? Next we have is T.S. Eliot wrote two essays on Mil Milton. The first Milton, uh, the first was called Milton 1, which was published in 1936. And uh, the second was called M Milton 2nd. Uh, it was first published in which year? 1945, 1950, 1960, and 1963. What is, what will be the correct answer? So correct answer is 1960. Got it? In 1960, it was uh, means John Milton's so, sorry, uh, the book called Milton Second of T. S. Eliot. It was first published in 1960. Got it? So they have quite complicated the question. The way they ask question is very complicated always. So always try to uh, hope for worst. Then only your exam will be lit little bit good. And whatever you have read, whatever you have been taught, that will never come. But through your intellectual guess and connecting the dots, you can always win. Otherwise, you, you will never win okay that's my point of view you may de defer it number 62 it says which shakespearean character puts this que question who who is it that can tell me who i am which shakespeare char character puts this question who is it that can tell me who i am lady macbeth caliban king lear hamlet 62 
and here I would like to add one more thing that since you all know that the contribution of William Shakespeare is very high okay and no one can deny it that's why whatever he has written all his works you must know at least the summary the main characters you must know okay so the correct answer of 62 will be C that is King Lear King Lear has said that who is it that can tell me who I am this was a tragedy number 63 it says who is the author of lives of the novelist who is the author of lives of the no novelist options are sir walter scott charles dickens d.s lawrence charlotte bronte so all these writers are very very important and they are very very notable please go through their literary works so uh, what will be the correct answer of 63 the correct answer is sir walter scott and he has written the book called lives of novelist then we have number 64 it says in whose poem do we find the following lines in whose poem do we find the following lines it says i wander into each character street near where the character camps does flow and mark in every face i meet marks of weakness marks of who who has written this line william Wordsworth, pb sally lord byron william black so who is the correct answer correct answer is 64 that is the William Black if you don't know William Black then please read his poems and if you don't know his biography then do you must know it is very important for your exam next we have is 65 it says which of the following is not intellectual dishonesty this is a question related to research aptitude which of the following is not intellectual dishonesty it says selective reporting over generalization bias literature review which of the following is not intellectual dishonesty according to you what will be the answer just think it inside your brain so the correct answer will be number d that is literature review okay it is not intellectual dishonesty if you don't know what is literature review then please go through it you must know then we have number 66 uh, not 66 yes yes it is 66 but match the novels in list one with their settings in list two list one it says the magic mountain list and b is saying disgrace c is saying ulysses d less miserables than dublin paris davos cape town so now we have to match the uh, each option with the correct one what is the correct one 66 so correct option is a that is the magic mountain it will be re related to Davos disgrace it is a novel famous novel written by J.M. Korji if I'm not wrong disgrace it is written by uh, J.M. Korji I have told you and it is based in Cape Town in South Africa uh, and then Ulysses it is in Dublin then less measurables it is in Paris so these all are very very important works please go through it many questions are often repeated related to these novels then we have next question 67 it says how many long accents does Vladimir prop outline as essential to the found to the function of a folk tale I will repeat the question again it says how many long action accents does Vladimir prop outline as essential to the function of a folklore sorry folk tale options are 29 31 33 35 this is also very very important please not not it down or remember it so the correct answer is 31 okay according to him 31 must be there to function as a folk tale 68 it says which of the following novels deals with the horrors of world war ii which of the following novels deals with the horrors of world war ii the red beds of courage a farewell to arms the naked and the dead all quiet on the western front these all are very very prominent and these all are notable okay notable works by the notable writer and you must know all about them so please go through it 68 the correct answer is 
the naked and dead the naked and the dead got it so this is the novel deals with the horrors of world war 2 and they are uh this is these all are related to world war 2 all quite on the western front this is also uh a war mo- uh, novel that has been adapted into a hollywood movie if i'm not wrong so it is available in netflix so you can check it out and watch it 69 it says who advised mulkras anand to give up his bloomsbury english to write about the untouchables who advised mulkras anand you should know about him he is an indian english writer mulkras anand uh, and who advised him uh, to give up his bloomsbury english to write about the untouchables and he has written about untouchables also so who has advised him that thing rabindranath tagore chitranjan das jawaharlal nehru mahatma gandhi so what is the correct answer correct answer is num- number d that, that is mahatma gandhi then we have is 70 it says which american poet does lionel trilling regard as a terrifying poet which american poet does lionel trilling regard as a terrifying poet walt whitman emily dickinson adrienne rich robert frost what will be the correct answer correct answer is number d robert frost you must have uh, read many of of his poems and he is known for his poems like uh, erotic stand and there are many more i have forgotten number 71 it says william faulkner's sorry william faulkner's novel the sound and the fury derives its title from one of the following texts so what what is the text name coriolanus macbeth the white devil volpone 71 so correct answer is macbeth the sound and the fury uh, macbeth is re- written by you all know it's a tra- tragedy by william shakespeare Then we have seventy-two. It says, "Which Indian poet wrote the Tro- Trojan War?" Which Indian poet wrote the Trojan War? Dom Morris, Nisim Ajikal, Sir Siri Aurobindo, Kamala Das. What is the correct answer? It is C. Siri Aurobindo. If you don't know about him, please read about him. His works, his philosophy, all about him. Very, very important. Next we have is seventy-three. It says. Identify the writer in list one with the movement in list two. List one, uh, in li- list one there is, there are writer names, and in list two there are poet means form of poetry or movement of poetry. Robert Creeley, Nathaniel Hawthorne, Kingsley Amis, Lawrence Farlinghetti. Movement poetry, beat poetry, Black Mountain poetry, transcendentalism. So, what is the correct answer? correct answer is d that means wait I, i will tell you it says d that means a3 robert creeley uh, black mountain poetry b4 nathaniel nathaniel hawthorne it is related to transcendentalism and c kingsley amis one movement poetry d lawrence Fer- ferlinghetti it is related to uh, two beat poetry so these all are very very important okay please go through it in detail what question will come related to this thing no one knows so be prepared number 74 it says the title of browning's poem chile roland the dark tower came is taken from milton's paradise lost dryden's macfacno shakespeare's henry four part one shakespeare's king lear so where this title was taken 74 this title was taken from number d that is william shakespeare's king lear okay king lear is a tragedy i have told you next question we have is 75 it says the great god pan was re- written by whom the great god pan it's a book it was re- written by whom m r james arthur macken edgar allan poe tennyson Bo- all writers are very not notable please go through them means their works and their biography So the correct answer of seventy-five is B. That is Arthur Macken. Arthur Macken is the correct answer. Got it? Okay. Number seven, seven six we have is Bauhaus. B a u h a u s. Bauhaus is what? A Gothic rock band. An essay on the Gothic. A movie or a poem. What is the correct answer? So the correct answer of seventy-six is A. That is a Gothic rock band. If you don't know about it, you have to know. Please go through it. in the google do you will get it 
that's all 77 it says identify the correct match so this is also a correct match thing uh, question uh, chetan bhagat nights at the call center aravin adiga the girl from the nongrim hills sashi despande the lowland amish tripathi the immortals of meluha hmm. so what is the correct answer uh, nights at the call center i think this is correct and Ar- aravin adiga the girl from the nongrim hill this is wrong because this book was re- written by uh, i have forgot forgotten his name some kind of soikya or what okay so what is the correct answer so correct answer will be number 77 correct answer is d amish tripathi the immortals of meluha this is the correct answer okay the immortals of meluha this is written by uh, amish tripathi him, himself that's why this author write uh, book combination is correct all are wrong chetan bhagat night at the call center this is also wrong if i said it was correct then i'm wrong arvin adiga this, this, this is also wrong sashi despande this is also wrong next question we have is 78 it says match the works in list one with the writers in list two so writers and their works bama uh, Santa Bai Kamle, Hosang Merchant, Vasun Dehra, Flower to Flame, Mohana Swami, Story of My Life, Sangati. So, what is the correct answer of 78? Correct answer of 78 will be C. That means A. Bama is Sangati. B3. That means Santa Bai Kamle, Story of My Life. Santa Bai Kamle, Story of My Life. Please re- re- remember it remember it and please try to research about it and then we have c1 that is hoshang marchand power to flame d vasundhira vasundhira means uh, two mohana swami mohana swami next question is 79 it says which famous play focuses on the problem of aids which famous play focuses on the problem of aids aids the crucible the glass menagerie the hairy app angels in america so what is the correct answer correct answer is number d that is angels in america angels in america so this novel is related to it's not novel sorry it's a play number 80 it says which of this critic is known for his work on reader response you must have heard re- reader response theory so uh, which of this critic is known for his work on reader response Northrop Fry, Louis Althusser, Wolfgang Eiser, Clint Brooks. So what is the correct answer of 80? Correct, uh, correct answer is Wolfgang Eiser. Wolfgang I- Eiser. Next question we have is 81. The storm and drang movement influenced the what? The storm and drang. It is a movement influenced by symbolist movement, surrealist movement, gothic dark romance, neoclassical movement. These all movement are crucial to know that's why it is your task to research about them so what will be the correct answer correct answer is related to see that is gothic dark romance gothic dark romance it is related to uh, storm and drang movement uh, number 82 it says identify the novel of margaret Atwood that is based on the post-apocalyptic life uh, margaret A- Edward, she is a Canadian writer. If you know, if you don't know, then you have to know. So please go through her biography and her literary works. And uh, Margaret Edward has written a famous uh, novel, dystopian novel called *The Handmaid's Tale*. Okay, but here it says other thing. It is asking that identify the novel of Mar- Margaret Edward. That is based on the post-apocalyptic life the blind assassin oryx and craig catch eye and surfacing what is the correct answer correct answer is b that is oryx and craig Eighty-three. it says which writer did not belong to the movement poets which writer did not belong to the movement poets philip larkin ted hughes elizabeth jennings 
Dylan Thomas. All writers are noteworthy. Please note it down. Please go through it. Means their works. So what is the correct answer? Correct answer of it is D. That is Dylan Thomas. Dylan Thomas is the correct answer. Okay. Next question we have is in novum organum. In novum organum. Bacon classified some intellectual fallacies as idols of the mind. Which of the following is not one of them? Let me repeat it. In novum organum, Bacon classified some intellectual fallacies as idols of the mind. Which of the following is not one of them? Idols of the cave, idols of the marketplace, idols of the theater, idols of the temple. So, what is the correct answer? Correct answer is D. That is idol of the temple. Idol of the temple. Remember it. And if if you don't know Francis Bacon, then please go through his biography and his works. Eighty five. Who, according to Robert Browning, is the lost leader? Who, according to Robert Browning, is the lost leader? John Milton, John Dryden, P. B. Shelley, William Wordsworth. What is the correct answer? Correct answer is D. That is William Wordsworth. So all writers are very familiar familiar to you, I think. But if if you don't know, then please go through them also. Number eighty-six. It says Charles Darwin. You all know he was a he is a big Victorian writer. Uh, he has written a famous work called On the Origin of Species, which was published in eighteen fifty-nine. This year also saw the publication of three other famous works. Choose the set of correct three among the following. So you have understood the que- question. I think let me repeat it. Charles Darwin's On the Origin of Species. It was published in eighteen fifty-nine. This year. Also saw the publication of three other famous works. Choose the set of correct three among the following: Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities, John Stuart's Mill on Liberty, Tennyson's In Memoriam. So there are so many options. Uh, and number B saying Hardy is far from the meddling crowd. Matthew Ar- Arnold's Culture and Anarchy, Browning's The Ring and the Book. Number C saying Samuel Smiles' Self Help, John Stuart. Mills on Liberty, Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities, George Eliot's Adam Barry, Matthew uh, Matthew Arnold's Culture and Anarchy, Tennyson's In Memoriam. So, what is the correct answer of seventy? Sorry, eighty-six. The correct answer of eighty-six is C. That is Samuel Smiles' Self Help uh, and uh, John Stuart Mills on Liberty and Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities. Eighty-seven number question. It says, which new genre did Audrey Lord's text "Jami" a new spelling of my name establish? Which new genre did Audrey Lord's text "Jami" a new spelling of my name establish? Historical fiction, absurdist novel, magic realism, uh, bio mythography. So these all are very prominent. Elements of English literature, you must know about it. Okay, so correct answer is bio mythography. Bio mythography. I have heard this for the first time. Is research about it. So this genre was established by Audrey Lord through his text "Jami: A New Spelling of My Name." Eighty-eight. It says which of the following works was not written by Thomas Carlyle? Which which of the following works was not written by Thomas Carlyle? A. Sartor Resartus. B. Charism. C. The Lamp of Memory. D. Unto This Last. Thomas Car Carlyle, a notable writer. Please go through his biography and his body of works. Uh, so here, uh, both C and D are correct. Okay. So if questions are wrong like this, then you you will get the full mark. You you don't have to worry. So C and D both are correct. These both are written. Oh, sorry, these both are not written by Thomas Carlyle. The Lamp of Memory and Unto This Last, eighty-eight. Then we have eighty-nine. Eighty-nine. It says, which existentialist philosopher thought that man is potentially always in conflict with his neighbor and all social relationships are doomed to frustration. Let me repeat it. Which existentialist phil- philosopher? So, if you don't know what is existentialism, it is a philosophy related to existence of human being. You, if you don't know, then please research about it. You must know. 
which existentialist philosopher thought that man is potentially always in conflict with his neighbor and all social relationships are doomed to frustration so there is a famous novel related to existentialism not novel it's a play that is called waiting for god okay you must have read by sam samuel uh beckett so what is the correct answer soren kirgard g paul sorte Albert Camus Walter Benjamin so here i will say one thing that sorry for my pronunciation again 89 so the correct answer is b that is jo paul sorte he was a french philosopher next question we have is which of the following is not a character in margaret lawrence the stone angel which of the following is not a character in margaret lawrence the stone angel bram sipley hager Penelop met. So, what is the correct correct answer? Correct answer is C. That is Penelop. Penelop. Okay. Margaret Lawrence. Ninety one. It is saying Stanley Fish wrote the essay. Is there a text in this class? You must have heard this line. And if you don't know, then you must know. Please go through it. As a response to this, who wrote the essay? Is there a fish in this text? It was a very. It is a very interesting question. It says. Stanley Fish wrote the essay called Is There a Text in This Class? As a response to this, who wrote the essay? Is there a fish in this text? Robert Scholes, Umberto Eco, Gerald Prince, Harold Bloom. So, what is the correct answer? 91 correct answer of this question is C. Gerald Prince. Very, very important. Rem- remember it. Gerald Prince has written this work called Is There a Fish in This Text? 92 it says visiting family is not uncommon is an example of what number a saying uh, circumlocution alliteration simile litotes so these all are re- re- related to figure of speech and literary de- devices which you must know so what is the correct answer correct answer is d that is uh, visiting family is not uncommon it is an example of litotes if, if you don't know what is litotes simile sir circumlocution alliteration please go through it 93 it says which of these statements are not true about okonko in chinua achieves things fall apart you must have read things fall apart okay so things fall apart is a uh, very famous works written by uh, nigerian writer chinua achibi it is based on nigeria on igbo tribe if i'm not wrong so l- let us read it Option A is saying he is embarrassed by his lazy father. He has four wives. He is not wealthy. He is unable to adapt to the changing times. So A is saying B and C. B is saying A and D. C is saying A and C. D is saying B and D. What is the correct answer of 93? So correct answer is A. That is B. Uh, he has four wives. And C. He is not wealthy. Okay. He is embarrassed by his lazy father. He is unable to adapt to changing time. 93. Okay. So this is the correct answer. Okay. Not true about Okonko. He is embarrassed by his la- lazy father. I think this is also correct. He has four wives. This is also correct. He is not wealthy. He is... He was wealthy. He is unable to adapt to the changing time. This is also somehow correct. Okay. Now let's move on to other question. There is 94. It says, which of the following is not a work by John Ruskin? John Ruskin, an Indian writer who writes in English. If you don't know him, know about him right away. So options are modern painters, lives of the most excellent painters, sculptors and architects. The seven lamps of architecture, the stones of Venice, 94. What is the correct answer? Correct answer is B. There is lives of the most ex- excellent painters, sculptors, and architect. You must know John Ruskin. Lives of the most excellent painters, sculptors, and architects. 95 is saying the following are the first lines of well known works by poets. Spend the lines in list one and the poets in list two. List one and list two, a poem and the poets are given. But do not let us quarrel anymore. Is little prop profits that an idle king? Remember me when I'm gone far away. Go for they call you separate from the hill. 
Christiana Rosetti, Robert Browning, Matthew Arnold, Tennyson. So what will be the correct match? 95. The correct match is B. That means 1. Uh, A3. But do not let us quarrel anymore. This is relate, uh, written by uh, A3, Robert Browning. Then uh, B1. It little profits that an idle king. It is written by Tennyson, composed by Tennyson. C4. Remember me when I am gone far away. This is written by Christiana Rogeri. Number D. Go for the call you suffered from the hill. It is written by Matthew Arnold. These all are very important writers, poets. Please know about them. Then 96 we have. This is a question related to term. The term new woman was coined by Oliver Skinner, Sarah Graham, Caroline Norton, Emma Frances Brooke. Who is the writer? Sorry, who has coined the term? A, B, C, D. 96. The correct answer is B. That is Sarah Graham. C has coined the term new woman. Okay. C has coined the term new woman. Okay. Wait, wait. Some kind of problem here. Draw. Sarah Graham. Done. Now let's move on. 97. It says, which of the following text has the subtitle called a novel without a hero? This question is often repeated. Okay. You must know about it. You must know the writer. You must know the story. All about it. So, which of the following text has the subtitle called a novel without a hero? Vanity Fair, In Invisible Man, Harjok, Sophie's Choice. 97. Correct answer is Vanity Fair. There is also a movie rela related to Vanity Fair. Please read it. Then we have nine uh, from... Okay, wait, wait, wait. From 98, from 98 we have, from 98 to 100 we have the poem and we have to read the poem and then we have to answer the question. Okay. Let, let us read it. It says, we pretended to know nothing about it. I withdrew to my childhood training, stay out of swampy undergrowth, chalk edges. This was around the time we were too, cru too cruel to kill the mice we caught, leaving them in the have a hard trap under the sun burning bramble of Rugosha. But moving up the trail, we caught a glimpse right at the start. The fog just over the hillock on the dim side slopes, spoiling the grass. The grass in script stand, neither of us looked. Looked, it seemed best to back away on the dune steps. Steep side, we surveyed beyond what we would come for. Ocean setting blue beyond the meadow. The Silvered blood like ones lying down, lovely enough to hold our, ourselves to that view. But the currents of an odor wafted in and out until the sweep of smell grew wider, wilder. Uh, the heat com compounded and ugliness settled its cloud over us, profound as human speech, although by then we were not speaking. So they, this is an excerpt of poem. So here we have to find out the answer by reading that poem. So let us find out. 98. Uh, 98 it says the uh, we, the, the word we of the opening line in, indicates to what? Three people, a crowd, two people, the speaker and the fox. So correct answer is two people. Okay. Two, two people is the correct answer. So like this also many questions are asked. So be prepared. 99. Why did again the word we of the opening line primarily come to the place to enjoy the ocean's beauty? To see a fox, to practice magic with silver wands, to wade around in swampy undergrowth. What is the correct answer? Why did the we of the opening line primarily come to the place? To enjoy the ocean's beauty, to see a fox, to face magic with silver wands, to wade around in a swampy undergrowth. 99. Correct answer is A. To enjoy ocean's beauty. To enjoy ocean's beauty. 100. Our last question. It says, at the close of the poem, which of the following senses overpowers and renders the busy visitors speechless gustatory olfactory tactile auditory so correct answer is olfactory if you don't know uh, what is this then you must know so please go through it thank you so much then in our next class next video we, we will resume our discussion in a new video 
Hello viewers, we have been discussing about UGC NET English Literature's some questions which will be helpful for our preparation in UGC NET English or MA in English entrance test or SET or SLED exam of different states. So without further delay, without any delay, let's begin our discussion. Here I would like to mention one thing that I have already uploaded two videos related to English uh, net English MCQ solution. Apart from that I have also uploaded one video that is related to revision series. So let's begin our discussion. The first question we have is the imaginary child occupies an important place in the imaginary child occupies an important place in which of the following works number one is saying the hairy app number b an american dream number c who is afraid of virginia wolf number d long day journey into night so these all four texts are crucial for you that's why please go through in detail about these works it will be very helpful for you okay so uh, let's try to know the correct answer so correct answer is the imaginary child occupies an important place in who is afraid of virginia wolf okay so correct answer will be number c who is afraid of virginia wolf second question we have is which type of research is least common in the humanities so this question is based on research aptitude. It says which type of research is last, uh, sorry, least common in the humanities. Analytical research, archival research, theoretical research, nomothetical research. We have four research here. So what will be the correct answer? Correct answer is nomothetical research. So this research is done very uh, scarcely in humanities other research like analytical research archival research theoretical re research these are uh, fundamental research done in humanities and these are very these are pretty common okay uh, now let's move on then we have number three it says which of these theoretical approaches originated in India which of these theoretical approaches originated in India? We have four options race studies, ethnicity studies, subaltern studies, eco feminist studies. These all four studies are pivotal. Okay, so without knowing this, it will be impossible for you to appear in NET exam and qualify. Therefore, I will here uh, appeal again. Please go through it. So the correct answer of this question which uh, will be subaltern studies subaltern studies you must have uh, heard the name Gayatri Chakraborty okay uh, she was uh, who created subaltern studies means she has pioneered it number four we have is the following quotation is from the prologue of a play it says Pray, would you know the reason why I am crying? The comic muse, long sick, is now a dying. And if she goes, my tears will never stop. So, this is a line. And this is a quotation from the prologue of a play. So, from which play this line is taken? Options are, Sheridan's The Rivals, William Congreve's Love for Love, uh, Atherges' The Man of Mood, goldsmiths she stoops to conquer conquer so these all four dramatist plays are significant for you uh, i will say the same thing i will reiterate the same thing please go through it okay so the correct answer will be what correct answer will be wait number four correct answer is d that is uh, goldsmiths she stoops to conquer she stoops to conquer from there this is taken this prologue is taken okay wait <clears throat> uh, 
then we will move on to our number five question it says match the playwright in list one with their place in list two so these kind of questions are often asked frequently asked that's why you must be prepared and you must solve many questions okay so here i would like to add one thing and that is uh, whatever you have read that will never come but through your intelligence okay through your consciousness through your uh, creativity you have to solve a question and that solution will be correct if you practice a lot for that you must practice lots of questions so uh, let's come to our question it says list one and list two list in list one we have author name like tony Kus kusner then george buchner luigi pirandello peter hanke and place names are henry for offending the audience wojak angels in america so what is the correct answer uh, correct answer will be a for that that is tony cusser is related to angels in america george buchner it is related to wojak and luigi pirandello it is related to henry four and then d peter henke it is related to offending the audience so these all are very crucial for you therefore you have to do the same thing that is to go in detail so correct answer will be number b this is the correct answer next question we have is which of these is not essential for research in the di digital humanities which of these is not essential for research in the digital humanities number one is saying computer literacy second b is saying open access databases number c knowledge of computer languages number d text analysis which of these is not essential means not important so what will be the correct answer according to you correct answer will be number c knowledge of computer language without this you can easily do your research in humanities uh, or in digital humanities you you don't need uh, ample knowledge related to com computer language okay let's move on number seven it says match the playwrights in list one with their place in list two in list one we have lots of names in list two we have lots of uh, number uh, four book names this one says Asif Karimbhoy Nisim Ezekiel Ramu Ramanathan Abhishek Majumdar the genes of Idga cotton 56 polyester at the four do not call it suicide Goa so now we have to find out the correct answer what will be the correct answer so correct answer will be C that means A for Asif Karimbhoy it is related to Goa and the Nisim Ezekiel Nisim Ezekiel B it is related to do not call it suicide then C Ramu Ramanathan it is related to 2 that is cotton 56 polyester 84 and then D1 Abhishek Majumdar it is related to the genes of Edgar okay now let's move on to our next question uh, next question is the same we have to match the playwright with their place match the playwrights in this one with their place in list two in list one we have playwright name and li list two we have play name james early john ford bimond and fletcher fletcher and messenger the play names are the maid's tragedy the beggar's bush uh this pity sees a whole hide a park okay we have options like this what will be the correct answer correct answer is c that means james surly it is related to heady park and then b3 john ford this pd c is a whore and then c b mountain fletcher it is related to the maid's tragedy and then d2 that is fletcher and messenger the maid's tragedy if you are not familiar with these names and plays you must go through it immediately it will definitely help you in guessing the correct answer in upcoming exams now let's move on then we have number nine it says bog bodies serves as imagery in the poems of what 
bog bodies serve as imagery in the poems of W. B. Yeats, S. T. Coleridge, Dylan Thomas, Seamus Heaney. These all are notable poets. Not only poets, they are they are known for their other uh, literary talents also. So please go through them. So what will be the correct answer? Correct answer is bog body serves as imagery in the poems of Seamus Heaney. The D will be correct answer that is Seamus Heaney. Now we have number 10. It says the epigraph of T.S. Eliot's The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock reads this. So here I would like to say one thing uh, that T.S. Eliot, we all know about him. You must know all of his works. Apart from that, many questions are often repeated related to the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock. So please read the uh, poem line by line and in detail. Okay. So here some epigraph is given. Now we have to find out from which text this is taken uh, or what. Let me try uh, find out. So here uh, this line is given. Uh, this line is re written in foreign language. So I cannot pronounce it properly, but still I would I will try. Sio credesi che mia risposta fosse a persona che me tornasse al mondo questa fiamme staria senza più scosse how would you translate the extract into english so this is the line and uh, now we have to find out how we can translate this line into in english here uh, four options are given so what will be the correct option so without further delay I, I would like to say that number a is correct it says if i thought that my reply were given to somebody who means somebody re returned to this world let me repeat it if, if i thought that my reply were given to somebody who may some someday return to this world so this is the correct translation of this epigraph taken from t.s Eliot's the love song of j alfred Prufrock. Okay, next we have is number 11. Number 11, it says, William Wordsworth contested the view that the language of the age is never the language of poetry. Who was the poet who had expressed this view? Let me repeat the question again. William Wordsworth contested the view that the language of the age is never the language of poetry. Who was the poet who had expressed this view? Who? Dr. Samuel Johnson. William Collins, William Cowper, Thomas Gray, number 11. It is D, Thomas Gray. Thomas Gray was the poet who has expressed this thought that the language of the age is ne never the language of the poetry. Okay. Number 12 we have is which of this statement is not true of the wife of Bath? Wife of Bath, if I'm not wrong, this is taken from uh, Canterbury Tales. That's why I'm saying I have said many times in my previous videos that you must read thoroughly about the Canterbury Tales and Geoffrey Joseph. So which of this statement is not true of the wife of Bath? Her face was bold, fair and red. She had five husbands. She had traveled to Rome and Athens. She knew the art of dancing. What is the correct answer? Correct answer is C. Okay, correct answer is C. That means she had traveled to Rome and Athens. This is the correct answer. Number 13, we have which of the following comments best interpret Sydney's loving in truth? Which of the following comments best interprets Sydney's loving in truth? So four uh, options are given. The sonnet oscillates between desire and disappointment. The sonnet is a plea for winning the lady love, speedy and grace. The theme of love is facet for initiating a debate on poetic craft. The sonnet is a celebration of Mario Lettri. So what is the correct answer? The correct answer of third thirteen will be C. That is, the theme of love is a facet. The theme of love is a facet for initiating a debate on poetic craft. Likewise, let's go to number 14. It says, which of the following prose works by Milton is believed to have considerable bearing on one of the major issues in Paradise Lost? You must have read Paradise Lost. If you have not, then please read it as soon as possible. Uh, so, which of the following prose works by Milton is believed to have considerable bearing on one of the major issues in Paradise Lost? An apology for uh, smack tenemus, the reason of church government arts against prelati, the doctrine and discipline of divorce, of re 
Reformation touching church discipline in England. What will be the correct answer? Uh, the correct answer is see that there is the doctrine and discipline of divorce. Just like that, we have number 15. Here too, we have to match list 1 with list 2 according to code given below. So many uh, lines, so many right uh, poem names are given. So the first is the uh, ecstasy. Second is the pulley to his coy mistress, the good morrow. It, uh, so he, I will not read the all the options because it will consume time but if you want to read it then you can pause it here i am giving you some time for to pause it here this is number one then this is number two this is number three this is number four now i will give you the correct answer uh, number 15's correct answer is b uh, b b means a2 a2 a means the ecstasy it will be related to when love with one another so inter animates two souls that abler soul which tense does flow dot flow defects of loneliness controls okay uh, fifth number 15 the uh, b that means now our second will be b1 b1 b means the pule one means yet him yet let him keep the rest but keep them with repining restlessness let him be rich and weary that at last at at least if goodness lead him not yet weariness may toss him to my breast okay uh, then we have number c4 uh, c to his coy mistress it will be re related to my vegetable love should grow vaster than empires and more slow and hundred years should go to praise thine eyes on thy forehead okay so 15b that means d will be one did the good morrow it is related to yet let him keep the rest but keep them with re uh, repining restlessness let him be rich and weary that at least if goodness lead him not yet weariness may toss him to my breast so these are the poem and these are the lines and uh, i will reiterate the same thing you must know about these points please go through it then we have number 16 this is too very long but still we we have to solve it and when you get a long que question the probability of making or pro probability of committing mistake is very high so always try to uh, have some patience and be calm okay and compose and then try to solve it gradually or step by step so let's begin it number 16 it says given below is a statement followed by two inferences so here uh, we have one statement one in inferences uh, statement says post humanism challenges the view that man is at the center of creation and contends that human beings share space with environmental forces plants animals and even machines in inferences are Post-humanism and diseases and non-anthropocentric universe. Number two is saying post-humanism equates human beings with plants, animals, and robots. So, uh, so many options are given like this. One is correct, but two is incorrect. One is incorrect, and two is correct. Both one and two are correct. Both one and two are incorrect. So, uh, here you can see one thing. Uh, if one option is repeatedly said that it is incorrect or correct okay that means that will be correct or that will be incorrect like this here we have seen that uh, one is correct okay and again it says uh, both one and two are correct here too we have said uh, one is correct therefore sometime it happens that if one option is repeated again as correct or incorrect so that will be uh, eventually correct okay so what will be the correct and so here uh, that theory we cannot apply okay number 16 a a means one is correct and two is incorrect means post humanism envisages a non anthropocentric universe this is correct but post humanism equates human beings with plants animals and robots this is not correct okay i thought i 
could apply here but uh, i can i have not been ab able to apply here uh, that theory which i have said it is just a uh, theory create created by myself and that that may not apply in all contexts here i could not apply then we have number 16 oh sorry number 17 it says which of the following poets did not write about the second world war which of the following poets did not write about the second world war alan lewis kate douglas sydney keys david gasconi so correct answer is david gasconi so if you don't know about the writers poets or playwrights who wrote during the time of second world war you must know because there are uh, plethora of works written during the second world war and those are very very noteworthy remarkable okay next question we have is yes i will be thy priest and build a fane in some untrodden region of the mind where bands taught new grown new grown with pleasant pain instead of pine cell murmur in the wind given below are four statements regarding the above quotation choose the incorrect explanation of the above line so here after reading these lines we have to find out the incorrect explanation so many options like this number a saying keats is talking about the labyrinthine uh, intricacies of the poetic imagination exploring the dark passages of the mind b saying the mind is compared to a forest full of the beauty of nature number c saying his thoughts would serve as a pine trees in the midst of which he will build his temple number d saying the flowers are his verses tended by the gard gardener fancy so what will be the correct answer number 18 correct answer number 18 is d that is the flowers are his verses tended by the gardener fancy let me mark it as correct okay then let's move on next question we have is 19 it says in the last canto of homer's iliad who convinced achilles to give away the dead body of hector for a ransom let me re repeat it in the last canto of homer's iliad who convinced achilles to give away the dead body of hector for a ransom that is hera priam uh, andromache andromache so what will be the correct answer it says Thetis will be the correct answer. Thetis, okay. Number 20 we have is after their arrival in Dido's Carthage, who spoke to Dido first and prayed for assistance? Let me repeat it. For their arrival in Dido's Carthage, who spoke to Dido first and prayed for assistance? Ennis, Ascanius, Elenius, Sinon. 20. Correct answer will be. Elonius. I'm sorry for the pronunciation as I uh, pronounce it. Sometimes it may happen that I have not pronounced correctly. Okay, let's move on. Then we have 21. Which of the following factors is not essential in the initial research proposal? So when you are writing a research proposal for your PhD or for any other context, then what will be uh, that factor which is not essential in initial research proposal number a saying the research question the research methodology the research objective the re research outcome what is the correct answer it is obvious uh, when you will uh, make a proposal then research question is must methodology is must objective is must then you uh, you must not have the research outcome because after doing the research you will get the result or the consequence so the correct answer will be the research outcome 22 it says match the author with their works uh, list one and list two author name and the their works name olga tokarjuk uh, frank Peretti and ted decker john irving jules verne house the cedar house rules house of day house of night the steam house so what will be the correct answer 22 so C is the correct answer. That means A, Olga Tokarjuk. It is related to three. Uh, that that is House of the Day, House of Night. Then B one, Frank Parity and Ted Dicker. Uh, it is real related to um, twenty two C. One, House. Okay. Then we have 
15 since 5 uh, sorry since 22 c uh, c2 john irving the cider house rules then d4 jules verne the steam house so these all writers are very important so please try to know about them otherwise it it may be problematic for you in upcoming exams so please try try to know all about it in details then we have is 20, uh, 23 match the authors with their books here do we have to do the same thing we have two list list one and list two list one it says uh, Isabel Allende, Mario Vargas Losa, Alezzo Carpentier, Carlos Fuentes, The Lost Steps, All Gringo, The House of Spirits, The Time of the Hero. What will be the correct answer? 23. Correct answer will be D, that means uh, A3, Isabel Allende, The House of Spirits, B4, Mario Vargas Losa, the time of the hero c1 alezzo carpentier the lost steps d2 carlos fuentes old gringo these all writers these all plays both are utmost important okay you must know go in detail then we have 24 it says which of the following is not a work by peter hankey which of the following is not the work by Peter Henke? A Sorrow Beyond Dreams, The Moravian Nights, Slow Homecoming, The Unconsoled. What is the correct answer of 24? Correct answer is D, that is Unconsoled is the correct answer. So this is the work not written by Peter Henke. So, so many maths, maths the following questions are gi given here. Bring out the correct match between the authors in list 1 and their works in list 2. List 1 we have author name, in list 2 we have text name. Alexis Wright, George Lamming, Eliso, Alice Munro, Siam Salvadurai, Funny Boy, uh, Carpenteria, In the Castle of My Skin, Runaway. I think most of you are familiar with Funny Boy. So this is a text re written by Siam Salvadurai from Sri, Sri Lanka. Okay. So let us find out the correct answer. Correct answer is B. That that means uh, one Alex Wright. It correct answer will be two Carpentaria, two three uh, George Lamming. The correct answer will be in the castle of my skin. Then three four Alice Munro, Runaway and Siam Seldaburai, Seldaburai. Selva Durai, sorry. Sam Selva Durai, a funny boy. Next question we have is 26. It says, Sir, Philip Sidney's definition of poetry in an apology for poetry as an art of imitation, that is to say, to a represented, rep representing, counterfeiting, figuring forth, to speak metaphorically, a speaking picture was derived from. Let me repeat it. Sir Philip Sidney's definition of poetry in an apology of poetry so this is also very prominent text you must know Pro prominent as well as celebrated text in the context of literary criticism and theory okay. so please go through it an apology for poetry as an art of imitation that is to say a representing counterfeiting fi figuring forth to speak metaphorically a speaking picture was derived from what scalizer horace Bacacchio Plotinus. I'm sorry if I have pronounced wrong. So 26. What is the correct answer? The correct answer of 26 B that means Horace. Horace. You must have read Horace satire. Okay. Next 27. 27 it says which novelist says that he describes not men but manners. Which novelist says that he describes not men but manners? Charles Dickens, Thomas Hardy, Henry Fielding, Samuel Butler. All are very, very familiar names. But if you have not read their literary works, then it will be problematic for you. Read it. 27. Uh, what is the correct answer? Correct answer of which novelist says that he describes not men but manners? It will be 
see that that there is Henry Fielding. Okay, Henry Fielding he was a pioneering figure in uh, English novel genre. Twenty eighth, what are the three cru- crucial words used by Stephen for a writer's survival in Joyce a portrait of the artist as a young man? Let me repeat it. What are the three crucial words used by Stephen for a writer's survival in Jam Joyce, a portrait of the artist as a young man? So this work of Jam Joyce is very, very notable. Read it. So we have to find out here options are given like this. Exile, cunning, craft, silence, exile, cunning, cunning, silence, secrecy, exile, silence, technique. So what will be the correct answer? Correct answer will be B. That is silence, exile and cunning. Silence, exile, and cunning. These are the three crucial words used by Stephen for a writer's survival in Jam Joyce, a portrait of the artist as a young man. Twenty-nine. It says, which of which book by Rohington Mystery? Rohington Mystery you must have heard deals with the Indian emergency. I think you, if you are uh, a student of CBCS, Choice Best Credit System, then this question will will be pretty easy for you. So op- options are like this: such a long journey, a fine balance, family matters, tales from the Firoz Bagh. What is the correct answer? Correct uh, answer is B. That means a fine balance. Okay. Uh, from uh, 30 to 33, we have given some uh, passages. We have to read it. Then we have to find out the answer. Paradoxes and oxymorons. So many long line. Okay, let me read it for you. Paradoxes and oxymorons. So these two are literary devices. If you have not read it before, then you must do it right away at once. It says this poem is concerned with language on very plain level. Look at it talking to you. You look out the window or pretend to fidget. You have it, but you don't have it. You miss it, but it mi- misses you. You miss each other. The poem is said because it wants to be yours and cannot. What's plain level? It, it is that and other things bringing a system of them into play. Play. Well, actually yes, but I consider play to be a deeper outside thing, a dreamed role pattern, as in the division of grace these long August days, without proof, open-ended, and before you know it gets lost in the steam and chatter of typewriters. It has been played once more. I think you exist only to tease me into doing it on your level, and then you are not there or have adopted a different attitude. And the poem has sat me softly down beside you. The poem is you. So these options we we have read. If you want to read it by yourself, then you can pause and uh, you can pause the video and read. Now let us try. Let us uh, solve it. Okay, question is identify an example of paradox in the following. Okay, I think you are fam- familiar. What is paradox? If you don't know, then you need to know many literary devices. Read it. So uh, you have it, but you don't have it. You miss it, but it uh, you miss it. It misses you without proof, open ended. It is that and other things. What will be the paradox? Paradox means when uh, whatever you are saying, it is just alternative. Okay, I am just giving you a very brief insight. If but if you want to know it in detail, then you must read extensively. Correct answer will be thirty uh, A. You have it, but you don't have it. Okay, you have it, but you don't have it. This is an instance of paradox. Likewise, we have thirty-one. It says, which of these lines best describes the poem? Which of these lines best describes the poem? It says, language on a very plain level. It is that and other things to tease me into doing it on your own level. It it gets lost in the steam and chatter of typewriters. What is the correct answer? Correct answer is B. That means it is that and other things. It is that and other things. Number thirty-two we have is this: choose an example of an oxymoron from the following. Oxymoron. I think most of you know. It's a basic literary term. If you don't know, then the same thing, which I. Uh, tell you to do do it 
So the correct answer will be what? Uh, options are, let me read it, a deeper outside thing. You have it, but you don't have it. Uh, so B will be not the correct answer since we have known that it is a paradox. It is that an other things open-ended. But very simple, oxymoron means open-ended. Means uh, the example of oxymoron is open-ended. Okay. Next we have 33. It says the line you miss it, it misses you. You miss each other suggests what? The poem's desire for the reader, the re reader's failure to understand the poem. The poem is said because it cannot find a reader. There are no readers for poetry. What is the correct answer of 33? It is B. The reader's failure to understand the poem or, the, or comprehend the poem. Now let's move on to our other questions. It is 34. Here we have to do the same thing that we have been doing for a long time. Match these famous titles on Shakespeare with the schools of literary theory to which they belong. Shakespeare, our contemporary political Shakespeare, the Shakespearean Tempest, uh, reading Shakespeare historically. New criticism, feminism, new historicism, new, new historicism, Marxism. What will be the correct answer of 34? So correct answer is A. It means A4. Shakespeare, our contemporary. It is related to Marxism. Okay. Then B3. Political Shakespeare. New historicism. C1. The Shakespearean Tempest. New criticism. Reading Shakespeare historically. D2. Feminism. New criticism, feminism, new historicism, Marxism. These are utterly important thing for you. You must know this thing in detail. Your concept must be clear. Okay, let us move on. Let's move on. Number 35, it says, The title of Thomas Hardy's Far From the Madding Crowd is borrowed from which of the following? You must have read Far From the Madding Crowd. If you have not read, then read it. If you want to watch a movie related to this novel, then do you can do it. The title of Thomas Hardy's Far From the Madding Crowd is borrowed from what? Shakespearean sonnets. Wordsworth's Lucy poems, Tennyson's In Memoriam, Grace's Elegy written in a country church. So these all are, all are, I'm saying, all are utterly significant. Go through it. 35. D. A Grace Elegy written in a country churchyard. From here, the title, not, uh, yes, that the title of that novel, far from the matting road, is taken. 36 we have is which of these characteristics apply to Thomas Carlyle's description of the poet in his poem volumes in his volume heroes and hero worship prophets historians martyrs reformers options are like this a b c a b d a b and c d uh, he, uh, so here we can apply one thing look so in a2 we have uh, in option a2 we have got a and in B2 we have got A, in C2 we have got A. That means A will be there. A is correct no matter what. That's why it is repeated for the third time. Okay, now we have to find out what is repeated again. Same thing B is repeated again. So for, uh, now we have to find out what will come C or D. Okay. So. What will be the correct answer? Correct answer is C. A and B. A and B is the correct answer. Number 37, it says, The phrase new journalism was codified with its current meaning. By whom? The phrase new journalism was codified with its current meaning. By whom? Truman Capote. He was an American writer, if I'm not wrong. Hunter Thompson, Norman Mailer, Tom Wolfe. Truman Capote, uh, he has written a popular work. I have forgotten the name. Cold-Blooded or what? Okay, uh, you must know about him too. And uh, in his that work, uh, in his work, he has used this famous line. Uh, more tears are said and what was more I have forgotten I will tell you later 
I have forgotten, I tried, but I failed. The phrase new journalism was codified with its current meaning by whom? Truman Capote, Hunter Thompson, Norman Mailer, Tom Wolfe. What is the correct answer? Correct answer is D, that is Tom Wolfe. Next question 38, it says Virginia Woolf characterized the literary style of which English writer as loving and taking the liberties of a lover. Let me repeat it. Virginia Woolf, you must have heard his her name, sorry. Virginia Woolf characterized the literary style of which English writer as loving and taking the liberties of a lover. S. T. Coleridge, uh, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, Walter Peter, William Hazlitt, Charles Lamb. Both are very, very all are not both are all are crucial know about them in detail 38 the uh, correct answer will be William Hazlitt William Hazlitt he was the writer uh, whom Virginia Woolf characterized the literary style of which English writer as loving and taking the liberties of the lover 39 it, it says what is meant by uh, intertextuality making a new edition of an existing text d demonstrating relationship between texts plagiarizing from several texts quoting from several texts what is the correct answer 39 correct answer is b that is demonstrating relationship between texts that that is called intertextuality 40 of which book is the subtitle or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life of which book is this is this the subtitle or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life so these are the writer and the name Jean Baptiste Lamarck the natural history of animals Charles Leal principles of geology Charles Darwin on the origin of species France, both race, language, and culture. All are Im important. Please go through it. So, uh, what will be the correct answer? Correct answer is C, that is Charles Darwin on the origin of species. This is a revolutionary text. Okay, you must read it in detail. So, origin on the origin of species, it has discovered so many uh, new things. And the uh, subtitle of this book is Preservation of Favored Races. In a struggle for the life okay next question we have is who wrote India wins freedom who wrote India wins freedom Mahatma Gandhi Jawaharlal Nehru Sardar Ballabhai Patel Maulana Abul Kalam Azad who is the correct answer 41 correct answer is D there is Maulana Abul Kalam Azad India wins freedom please remember it and this you all know this uh, these names Right. Uh, these names are pretty uh, pretty familiar for you I think if I'm not wrong uh, Mahatma Gandhi we all know Jawahar Nehru we all know Sardar Sar, Balabhai Patel we all know Maulana Abul Kalam Azad we all know so uh, try to know what kind of works they have done in the field of literature apart from their uh, freedom fighting career okay that's all for today's video and then we will in our next class we will start from not next class next in next video we will start from 42 thank you so much